Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call our Community Redevelopment Agency um, meeting to order. But before I do, of course, I want to welcome some new faces sitting with us, joining us today. Um, certainly, we welcome the uh, additional public servants to the Community Redevelopment Agency Councilman Wingate, Councilman Terhar, Councilman Bear, welcome. Thanks. And a return, by the way, I just said to Councilwoman Jewel Canada Wynn, it's like jumping back on a bicycle, isn't it? And welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. All right, as is customary for all of our community redevelopment agency meetings at this time, I need to ask for the full disclosure of ownership or control in any way of interest directly or indirectly with properties that are within the CRA boundaries and I will uh, we we do have some again new faces so we'll soon be familiar with whether or not you have any sort of interest in the CRA but Mr. Tahar uh, I do own uh, property in the CRA all right thank you Mr. Wingate no I do not all right Councilman Wu, myself, yes, I do. Canada Wynn, no. All right. Mr. Johnson. No, thank God I didn't buy any in 08. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, Councilman Bear. Yeah. Thank you. I am a property owner. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Pratt and Councilwoman Myers. No. All right. Thank you. Next. Um, is the first action item and that is the approval of the November 13th CRA board meeting minutes move the approval second a motion and a second all those in favor Aye. Aye. all right that passes thank you our next action item is the election of CRA chair and vice chair I believe um, CRA members were distributed copies of the nominations uh, that were submitted and at that time those nominations included um, Councilwoman Myers nominated by Councilwoman Myers for chair as well as vice chair nomination by Councilwoman Myers again nominating herself and Brian Spencer, I was nominated as for a chair position by Councilman Larry Johnson, and then a vice chair, the vice chair position for CRA. Also, um, Mr. Jo Councilman Johnson nominated Councilwoman Megan Pratt. So, with those nominations, I will at this time entertain any comments or um, if it, because it is nomination for a chair position certainly I I uh, welcome fellow CRA members to offer any comments yes Councilman yeah, Johnson. thank you mr. chair since uh, I nominated uh, uh, you I just uh, wanted to speak uh, uh, why I nominated you and that was uh, um, you are a resident of the CRA you represent the CRA I think you've done a good job uh, representing uh, uh, as a chair of the CRA the past year, and I think you should uh, have an opportunity to continue on, and uh, that's why I nominated you. Thank you very much. Yes, Councilwoman Myers. Yes, thank you. Well, I'd just like to state briefly why um, I uh, am interested in the position. Uh, while I do not own property here, in the CRA district. I think all citizens of Pensacola have an interest in uh, the CRA district. Um, I know that I have had a great interest in the CRA district for about eight years. I've worked on uh, numerous projects having to do with our infrastructure. Uh, one of the first projects I worked on about eight years ago was have, had to do with uh, access from Bartram Park to Fountain Park so persons with disabilities would be able to 
uh, have a place to park and walk across the street. At that time, you could not get across the street. There were no sidewalks over there or curb cuts. So I worked with the city on that project, and now we have a unified park system over there that's very accessible from Bartram Park all the way to Seville Park. Um, also, at that time, there was no ramp on the gazebo. That was another project I worked on. I worked on handicapped parking throughout the, um, the CRA district. And as some of you who have been on council for a while remember, hopefully you remember, that I used to come down here uh, very frequently, staying till 9, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock one night, just to speak for four minutes regarding the infrastructure downtown. That was primarily why I came to city council, most of the time having to do with uh, uh, accessibility issues in the CRA district. Um, also, I'm very familiar with the CRA uh, statutes, Florida Statute 163. But I think that at this period in time, it's a great time to be on the CRA. I think we have many great opportunities, uh, not only to uh, look at and implement our own uh, community redevelopment plan, but uh, I've been reading over the URAC report and the many recommendations that the URAC report uh, has, has made, some of which I think can be implemented quickly. We're also working on projects that uh, we've been working on for a while, and that is looking at the lighting downtown and how to generate uh, sources of revenue. So I'm... Uh, really fired up and ready to go in terms of uh, uh, working on, on the CRA and with the URAC and uh, trying to uh, build consensus among not only the uh, CRA but also other uh, stakeholders, uh, which is actually the whole city, by the way, and the county too. But uh, I, I would... Uh, like very much to be the chair of this uh, committee. And uh, so uh, that's my position, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you very much. At this time, I, would, um, I will take this opportunity, unless other council members intend to speak, since Councilwoman Myers um, promoted certainly her nomination. Um, I would like to offer to fellow CRA members why I would be very honored to continue uh, for another year as CRA chair. Um, perhaps some of you don't know, but for the past 19 years, I have been individually involved outside of council in some of the reinvestment or economic redevelopment projects in the form of uh, what I like to say adaptive reuse. The first being um, the conversion of what was the Goldenberg Warehouse facility on Main Street to what is now a 26,000 square foot office building. After that, I co-developed a building on Main Street, a 35,000 square foot building that was the county annex um, basically, it was a cabinetry fabrication and equipment repair shop. That is now um, occupied primarily by Beggs and Lane Law Firm. But instead of going through the list of those projects, which, by the way, the most recent one that I personally was involved in, and most importantly, before I sat on this council, was the conversion of the Bill Thompson's office supply building to five residences on South Balin Street, Balin Lofts. But I also enjoyed being very involved just as a citizen in, sp in spearheading the conversion of overhead utilities on Main Street um, from Tarragona westward to uh, almost um, to Spring Street, that converting those overhead utilities to underground, that required partnering. I appealed to the city council at the time for funding. Most of that funding fell on the private uh, owners themselves, but we recognized that 
we could affect economic redevelopment by improving the infrastructure, the aesthetics of Main Street, one of the most important heavily trafficked corridors um, east and west through our downtown. In addition to that, I stood in this room and rolled out about a 25 foot long roll of paper showing how parking could be improved on South Palafox 15 years ago um, after some land planners had presented a plan that I didn't think capitalized on that. Um, I also was a strong promoter of two-way traffic before it was um, talked about. We, I also spearheaded the creation of additional on-street parking on Jefferson Street by changing that from four lanes to two lanes of forward-end angled parking. And again, um, my motivation was making downtown more accessible, um, more walkable for citizens. And I will now end my self-promotion. And at this time, I think, unless there's any other commentary, um, Ryan, as you all know, generally for elections, we have um, our city clerk provide the, um, the ballots. Ryan has distributed those ahead of time. We have both a document for voting for chair and vice chair. And I feel comfortable just providing everyone instructions to cast your vote. And Ryan, if you will please um, gather the votes. We're and, voting chair and vice chair right now. Yes, so right now. I, let's do vote. Them both. Okay. Do them both. Do them both. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Please remember to sign your ballot. So we're doing both chair and vice chair the same. We're doing them both. Yeah. Are we doing them both? They were two different names. I was just one person. They said they. He said both. He said both. Because it, was it two different names or yeah, something? Yeah, it was. But if there's a runoff for mm -hmm. Sherry Myers and Megan or for vice chair. Okay. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, John. We need to wait for that tabulation to determine who will um, chair the remainder of today's meeting. Maybe we can convince former 
Council Member Townsend to come back and just sing to us for these long extended <laughs> moments of silence. Thank you, shall I? Okay. <laughs> uh, congratulations to Chairman Spencer and for Vice Chair, Ms. Pratt. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We'll move on to the next item of business, and that is the um, consideration of forgiveness of the CMPA loan for the Hunter Amphitheater back of the house. Now, we have the recommendation that the CRA consider the CMPA's request for forgiveness of the CRA's $500,000 loan to the CMPA for the construction of the back of the house facility at the Hunter Amphitheater and consider refinancing alternatives. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I, uh, I'm going to just jump right into this. I, I don't, uh, I don't uh, support forgiving this loan at this time. I'd like to see us extend this loan from three to five years. You know, we've got some land parcels over there that, uh, that we haven't leased yet. We've got a sign opportunity in front of us, uh, a proposal from Lamar Advertising. I'll talk a little bit more of that, about that later that's uh, going to have possibly some revenues. We have uh, a bulk, bulkhead issue over there that we're going to possibly spend $2 million to, to build or not build. We have uh, also are looking at ways to possibly reduce uh, staff there at the C, uh, CMPA. Um, we have a lawsuit that's, that's out there also. But with all those, those and other issues outstanding, I just don't think it's appropriate for the CRA at this time to forgive this loan. And I'd like to see us extend this loan for similar terms that exist today. Um, say maybe interest only at an interest rate, I think, is today is at 2.5. For three to five years, um, I just, at this point, I just can't, can't see the CRA forgiving this loan, and I will not be supporting the forgiveness of that loan, but would like to make a motion that we uh, extend this loan for a term of three years. I'll second that. All right. We've got a motion and a second, as stated by um, Councilman Johnson, seconded by our new council member, Tahar. And at this time, I'll um, invite discussion. Yes, and Councilwoman Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we uh, had a very lengthy conversation about this when it came up originally, whether we would um, provide the loan. And um, I got the fun position of being in a very awkward swing vote position where I didn't want to support a long-term loan. I wanted to, to really encourage the CMPA to think creatively about how they could recoup. We had a, a room full of, of private organizations. They had contacted us various ways saying this would save us money. Uh, if we, you know, when we have an event, we have to rent trailers, et cetera, and um, they, they wanted us to do it. And, and so at the time, I, I supported having this year loan, throwing out there that I was hoping that the, the CMPA could could come up with a structure that would encourage these private in groups to, to take a part. They wanted this. How are they going to be part of it? This is not a charity to the private organizations. They said it would save them money. What could they do? And I, I understand they're nonprofits and that, that money's tight for them. But I, I thought, you know, maybe some sort of plan where, you know, they, they give some up front for reduced rent for the next several years or something like that. And so while I, I appreciate the, the intent, I do hope that um, if we are to um, extend this loan, that we receive from the CMPA a plan that says, you know, and so I guess what I'm saying is I would support that if there was a plan from the CMPA that shows how they're going to pay it off, what, how they're going to encourage the private sector to step up. Um, and it doesn't have to be the whole amount in the next year or whatever, but, but I think that there are creative ways that, that people can come up with in a situation where they're facing that 
if you have to pay that money, how can you get that money back? So, um, so I guess I, I don't think this is a clear way to do it, but I, I, I guess I would like to see us amend the, the recommendation that, that it's, I guess the, the deadline isn't for another month, that we'll extend it if in the next month there's some sort or two months there's some sort of plan presented that, that, that shows how they're going to give us something in the next year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councilwoman Canada Wynn. Thank you. Um, I do not support forgiving the loan. I, I do. The CMPA must act like a business. It is a business, and it must act like a business and not simply a public works project that's going to depend upon public dollars to bail it out. Uh, the length of time is, is questionable, uh, you know, how long it would be. I would like to hear from the CMPA board it, itself what would be um, a reasonable uh, payback time period. But I'm also concerned ab about other financial stabilities within that. If they cannot pay this loan, how are they paying basic operating costs, basic, you know, things for the CMPA and, and, and for for the project as a whole. So here um, I would like to see it along with uh, Council Member uh, Dr. Pratt about how they're going to repay it once you, uh, if it's extended. And um, I'm going to just schedule and try to get an appointment with our uh, director to just really look at all of the outstanding issues in reference to the park and its structure. However, I, I would like to see the CMPA act like a business, come up with these dollars, to pay it back. Thank you. Councilwoman Myers. Um, even though I serve on the CMPA and voted to... Microphone, the, please. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I do serve on the CMPA, and uh, I did vote uh, to bring this matter before the City Council. However, I do not support uh, the forgiveness of the loan for a number of reasons, and I would like to explain why. I went back and I looked at the multi-use agreement, uh, and there are numerous, if you haven't read it, I, I would recommend that uh, all CRA members uh, read it, but there are many, many revenue uh, sources listed in the multi-use agreement with uh, the uh, uh, Northwest uh, Flor with the North Florida uh, Professional Baseball. And I looked at the memo that was presented to the CRA at the time uh, there was a request for forgiveness of this loan. And in the memo it says, by the way, I did not support this. Uh, this. I voted against it because I, I did not feel they would have the money to pay back in a year. But they say in their memo, uh, dated uh, December 2011, last year, I think, CMPA is requesting consideration of a $500,000 line of credit slash loan that would be repaid from, from, from guaranteed CMPA revenue streams, including, but not limited to, lease fees from Blue Wahoo's baseball team, ticket surcharges, attendance surcharges, concession revenues, naming rights, and our parking revenues. And when I look at their most recent, from the Operation and Audit Committee, uh, their most recent report, and by the way, I have uh, this memo I'm going to pass along to council because you're asking for certain information uh, from the CMPA, and I think my memo lays out uh, a good groundwork for asking the kind of information we need to be asking. But my concern is that they have not uh, taken advantage of the streams of revenue that are available to them. What I would like to see, rather than just giving a say, three-year extension, that we um, give an extension uh, conditional on the CMPA furnishing us within 
the next six months the information that I have uh, set forth in, in this memo, uh, which is uh, list all revenue opportunities inside and outside the stadium from baseball and non-baseball events, such as but not limited to tickets, attendance, concessions, advertising, naming rights, selling of merchandise, sponsors, vendors, broadcast rights, parking, associated with the park and stadium and explain the process of maximizing each revenue opportunities. Two, list the performance of each revenue opportunity to date. Three, list the fee schedule for lease of the stadium and the park and the fee schedule for events held at the park. Four, list all expenses associated with the park and the stadium. Uh, five, list the actual expenses with the park and stadium to date. And six, request an independent audit to verify all of the above numbers provided by the team and the CMPA staff. Um, I also talk about in here that when the stadium is not being used uh, for, for games and it could be used for community events, that we aren't maximizing uh, the days that it could be used for community events because we get all the revenues from, from those. Um, so this memo also addresses what the CMPA is doing to maximize uh, the days that it, it could be using um, the stadium. And uh, so I just think that there are a lot of financial questions that we, we need answered before uh, we just uh, even I, I, I think we could extend it conditional on the CMPA furnishing us more detail. I would like to know about why why they haven't gotten any revenue from naming rights, for instance. What are they doing to try to get uh, naming rights revenue? So those those kinds of things. All right. Thank you very much, Councilman Bear. Yes, uh, I, got, I have two questions first. Well, I'll make a comment on the motion, uh, which is to, to revise it to a three-year. I'm not real comfortable with that until I know what some of the resources they have available. I'm concerned that over a year, the original request was for a 10-year payback, and that the, uh, the CRA came back and wanted to do a one-year. And I think that was a little bit difficult for the, uh, the CMPA to handle, considering they're $500,000 in the hole or were at uh, at least a month or a few weeks ago uh, and some of the backup I've seen was that they're pretty far in the hole already and to have to take on this debt and pay it back by January would probably be impossible. So I think we need to look at some way to uh, extend this. But I do have two questions. First, the, uh, from what I understand, this came through the CMPA as a uh, unanimous vote. Does that mean that our council members voted in favor of forgiving the loan? Uh, we had a discussion on not only forgiving the loan, but also on other options like extending the loan. So that, that's what I remember the motion being. Okay. Because the way it was put out was that it was unanimous to ask for us to forgive the loan. Well, it, we, as I, there were two council members who were not present. Okay. I, I was present. <laughs> Okay. But we had, had a fairly lengthy discussion, and my recollection of what the motion was was to bring it before council for either forgiving it or extending it. Okay. Uh, my other question goes to Mr. Reynolds, if I can. Yes, uh, Does the mayor have a recommendation, a recommended course of action? The recommendation is, is that you consider the options that are on the table, Councilman, whether that be uh, to forgive the loan or uh, uh, to extend the financing of the loan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there, yes, uh, yes. Councilman Wingate. Inside our pack, we've got a promissory note that says that they will pay. I think it's on them to, you know, figure out how they're gonna go about getting the money together to pay the money back. And it may be in, in our best interest to extend some terms to them, but we do have a promissory note for the $500,000. Yes. All right. Any other comments? And then I would like to add mine. Yes. I just one more. Again, I, I just think that we just need to a little bit more time. The CMPA needs to provide some more information. They have not provided enough information. 
there are some things that are not clear about uh, revenue streams, sources in the future of, of maintaining uh, the upkeep of, of the park. So I would like more, um, before we make that decision, give them at least six months to come up with that uh, information. Uh, that also gives me time to, to look up some information as well and get uh, caught up with all of the things. I'm caught up with some things, but I'm just really concerned here uh, about um, this, uh, you know, a promissory note, but the CMPA, $54 million is a lot of money. And that $54 million will, will have to be paid by all of us as city residents. So if there are some issues or concerns that are not being addressed about revenue streams, it needs to be done now. It needs to be addressed now. And so I would like for them to present their revenue uh, streams and how they're going to make and pay back this as well as maintain operating costs. And so I, I'm looking for not extending something for three years, but giving them an opportunity to produce the information that we need and then consider a long-term arrangement after that. All right. Um, many of you have commented. Uh, we have been reminded that there is an obligation on the part of the CMPA. They are asking for our forgiveness of, of a debt. Um, there were comments about business plans, wanting to see a business plan. And I think um, Councilwoman Myers most succinctly stated that there are ways that the CMPA can maximize all of the revenue opportunities um, that they have in the park, that we have not seen that maximizing or the business plan come to fruition yet. Um, and Councilman Johnson, uh, certainly I'm hearing members discuss wanting to entertain a shorter term than that three years and suggest that uh, there may be support for an amendment. I'm okay with amendment. I would like to hear from uh, the chair of the CMPA for his thoughts. I see him in the audience. If we would most respectfully request to hear from him. Yes, um, will do. And I um, would at this time invite Mr. Merrill to um, step up to the uh, to the speaker's podium. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, members of the committee. Um, Mr. Merrill, this is not an auction, not an auction, by the way. <laughs> yes, go go ahead. How about that? Can I move on the room? That's, Thank you. For, I appreciate y'all. Councilwoman Myers is going to let me sit at the table, so I'm going to do that. I appreciate uh, being called upon, and uh, I appreciate the motion. We're kind of in an unusual situation. The CMPA is uh, appointed by the city you guys and we're um, and we were kind of handed the amphitheater at one time as you recall is going to be the uh, University of West Florida um, that kind of got pulled out it fell on us there was a donor that was given money and he um, and that amount got reduced and we were going on with the amphitheater as we could and and then we were pressured as uh, Councilwoman Pratt and others said by the community, we need to do this back of the house. And the city came forward and said, we'll give you the money if y'all do the back of the house. We'll loan you the money if you'll do the back of the house. Um, and that's where we got to where we are today. And the conversation of that uh, 500,000 was, you know, probably not gonna be there a year from today. And we have this meeting we're having right now, and that's where we are. Uh, and I do wanna say, you know, we're, we're a group of volunteers, again, appointed by the city council. Uh, some of them been working on that committee for six years and I got 25 percent of y'all present um, of our committee members and you know we've come a long way and there's a we made some tough cuts and uh, as Councilwoman Canada Wynn said um, you know she wants to see where we are and I'm going to try to explain that briefly on our budget but we had to make some cuts as we went and we and we got to where we are we've had a lot of input from citizens and people around this table and in this room to get where we are and, and fortunately, we've had a successful, our, one of our tenants in there is Pensacola Baseball, and they've had a great success the opening year. 
but they are just one of the tenants, as, as we've said. I mean, they are a tenant of the stadium, uh, but we have the whole park and other people that will be in that stadium, as we've seen what's happening there on non-baseball events. There's 70 games that will happen, and uh, you know, there's other revenue sources. Now, another part kind of puts us in an interesting spot is we've we've hired the city to bring us revenue, maximize revenue, and uh, the facility and the stadium, and the, I mean the park, to bring in revenue. And we, we had a good opening November 17th that showed what we can do um, with with bands and fireworks and uh, lots of things out there that uh, that hopefully we can continue to rent the park. And if you've seen the schedule of what the city has done, neighborhood services, there's a lot of uh, schedules on the book that will help bring in revenue. But we are short, and one of the key ones, as, as Councilwoman Cantor Wynn hit, was naming. We do not have naming rights. There's a there's a sign in the median right now talking about um, might be a church service, something that's going to happen in the stadium coming up. might have been Christmas Eve, and it says at the Pensacola Wahoo Stadium. Well, it's not the Pensacola Wahoo Stadium unless they're stepped up that I don't know about and paid for that naming right. Um, that's a potential of several hundred thousand annually that we will get that we don't have yet, and that, is, that comes through both Pensacola Baseball and CMPA. Um, split that revenue source. We have not only the stadium to be named, but the field, which can be named. Mr. Merrill, sorry to interrupt you. What dollar amount did you just reference as possible? I'm um, using several hundred thousand dollars annually. Several hundred thousand annually for naming rights. Correct. I've or been, what is currently the no-name stadium. That is, or Pensacola Wahoo Stadium. Right. As I saw on the, and I took a picture of it last night as I drove past it. It's in the median. And the church put it up there. No, I mean, whoever's doing this service said, hey, we're going to have this midnight service in, in Pensacola Wahoo Stadium. The, uh, and so, you know, whatever we get at that point um, is additional money. Another thing that we're short on, and we've got one in the bank um, coming up, is Mr. Studer. On his building that he's building on first parcel, uh, which will bring in um, tens of thousands of dollars annually to the to the CMPA, not only does it bring us in revenue, that's one spot we're not having to maintain now. We maintain the spots. The city gets the actual revenue from the sale or the lease. We get revenue for the uh, caretake and the maintenance. So it lowers the space we got to maintain, plus we get CAM fees from them. Now there's eight more spots to go, so you can you know kind of do the math. As those start to go, more money comes to us. That also puts in a Curious spot. It's not up to us to sell those. It's the city that sells those and leases and negotiates, and we get the money off for the maintenance. So we're kind of back in the position of we owe you money, but we need you all to help us pay it on, on some of those issues. Uh, and there's other, uh, again, the Councilwoman Canada Wins position of other things that we need to do. We've got a good parking stream that the city is doing for us, neighborhood services, uh, from events that happen in there. But there's a number of other issues that as we rent it more, um, we uh, get these spaces leased out, and naming rights are some of the big ones. We did um, have a good conversation with a local uh, advertising agency about putting some markers up there, marquees that would that would could be a substantial amount of money up front, several hundred thousand plus up to 50,000 annually that would come from that. That originally was not something that um, people wanted in the park and now we've come up with a design it's in our design committee and in the audit operations to come back I think this coming or next week to see where we end up on that which is also named a name I mean a revenue source we again you know we're not into our first year yet um, we have had some expenses as Councilman Johnson said with legal fees I'm gonna spend three days in court um, in January uh, with a former developer and hopefully we're gonna get We've got money held in the court. We're hopefully going to get that and others back. And, and that's um, almost 500000 but we've had legal fees that we've had to pay. Um, we're, and, again, we're not in, into our first year of operations. And as everybody knows in a business, you have some growing pains and undercapitalization, and that's certainly where we are. But we're working hard, and, and we have hired somebody just recently to help us with some finances and how to maximize those finances um, in the park. We'd be glad to answer any questions. I, I do have one question. Okay. Okay. Yes, so, directed so, to Mr. Merrill. Merrill, yes. Okay. So if if the CMPA board was given uh, six months or three months to come up with some of the questions that Council Member Sherry Myers put in and about revenue streams and anticipations and 
projections, the CMPA board would, would be um, satisfied with that and be able to provide that information to us when we come back and address it again. And I don't think I ha do I have this? No. And I haven't seen this, so I can't say absolutely yes. That's mm -hmm. depending on what this is until we've read it. But, but the person we're putting under contract, um, it's going to be a six-month contract on how to maximize revenue. Okay off of the overall park. And a lot of people want to bring up Pensacola baseball and let's squeeze every penny out of them. You know, we, you've got to be careful with that. I mean, there's, there's certain, um, uh, we've got a three year lease with them and we've got, we will get more revenue from this next year and that we do get a ticket surcharge off of season tickets that we didn't get this past year. Uh, the more successful Pensacola baseball is, the better for us, obviously, um, for all of us and that it brings in more revenue and, and, you know, it's a great amenity downtown, and it's hard to put a price tag on that. Uh, a lot of parks don't sustain themselves, but uh, Plaza de Luna doesn't pay for itself, but it's a great amenity. I'm hoping that CMPA or the uh, Community Maritime Park will pay for itself. And even though it's a great amenity, we've got some revenue sources there, and, um, you know, the potential is great. We had a, a great season. When you look at baseball, you, we've had a great um, um, events been held in the park, and we'll continue to do so. Yes, Councilwoman Myers. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if we could uh, just extend this for, for six months because I may, you know, three, three years may even be too much uh, for the CMPA to pay back because three years would be, I mean, if you paid it back uh, so much every year, uh, it would be around $170,000 a, a, a year. So, uh, but I, I, would, I would feel more comfortable with a six month extension and let them come back in that six months period of time with a more thought out uh, and in writing uh, uh, a, proposal. A, a proposal. Uh, if you will, um, our, our justification, so that we'll have a realistic uh, picture of what they really are capable of doing, rather than just uh, coming up with an arbitrary number of years. It may be better to do 10 years, but let, let's try to be realistic with whatever we do. And I think six months that they should be able to give us a realistic picture of what they can expect uh, in terms of, of revenues and whether or not they could pay a loan off in, in three years or two years. So that, that would be my recommendation. All right. And knowing, of course, that recommendation as you make that, you are part of they. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, Councilman I, Wingate. I, I just wanted to make it clear. What we're talking about now is the consideration of, of the forgiveness of the loan. It, are we going to forgive it or not? To me, that's the question that's on the floor. I think, I think um, what we have on the floor right now, Councilman Wingate, is not a motion that addresses um, to forgive or not to forgive the loan, but instead a, pr a motion to extend the loan um, for a three-year period. The discussion that I'm hearing, it seems that there's support for reducing just any sort of loan extension, but again, not forgiveness um, for a period of six months. It would require someone to withdraw their second for us to then, or, or the maker of the motion could amend it. Yeah, I can, I can make an amendment, I believe, Mr. Chair, um, and, and I'll, I will so do that. I think six months still might be a little tight, though. I, I, um, you know, we, we just, it sounds like we've just brought somebody on board to take a look at these revenue streams. So I'd, if I could make it eight months, if I could maybe get eight months, that way we don't have everybody so tight that, um, um, that they don't have a, a, a good opportunity. I want to give them a, a real good, healthy opportunity to take a look at this and to, uh, to give us their recommendations. So if I could uh, uh, be allowed, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, make an amendment to my motion to make the loan extension for a period of eight months from the termination today as it uh, is presented today. That would be January 15th, uh, 2013. We would go to August 15th, uh, 2013, um, with the expectation that there are um, uh, uh, ideas brought forth uh, uh, as far as revenue streams of, of ways of paying this back. 
and uh, uh, be able to have a take a look uh, take a look at that at that time. Thank you. Second. All right. Yes. And now we have a new motion. Um, and a second, Councilwoman Pratt. Just a quick math clarification. Eight months would be September. So either August or September, whichever. Let's you say know. September. Okay. September. All right. I know you always Mr. take Chair. your holiday in August. Okay. So we have, yes, um, we have that motion currently in a second to extend, not forgive the loan for a period of eight months, September. Uh, which is ending September 15th. 2013. Yes, Councilman Baer. Just a, a clarification. Originally, the motion was for a three-year to extend the loan uh, repayment. And then I heard some discussion about giving them six months to come up with a plan. And now we're at eight months. We've extended the loan. So we dropped it from three years to eight months. And we're going to expect them to repay the loan in eight months. Is that the, correct? It, as I understand, this this will extend the loan, which has um, is currently due for an eight-month period. If I could, Mr. Chair, yeah, give them eight months. They come back to us. They tell us a plan. And at that time, we take a look at it if we want to extend it some more, if we call the loan in eight months. Um, if we call the loan in eight months, I, you know, it's like getting blood out of a rock. How are we going to get it if CMPA ain't got any money? So, you know, we extended eight, uh, eight months till September. Um, prior to that, we uh, hope that they bring forth a plan. Uh, and then at that time, we decide that we give them maybe, I think, uh, somebody said a 10-year payment repayment plan or a five-year or three-year, whatever that may be. But we give them an opportunity to take a look at with the um, person that they brought in to take a look at revenue streams. But at that time, we'll still have all, I believe, all options available to us. Thank you. Yes. Um, Ryan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to Ms. remind the CRA board that any modifications to this loan would have to be approved by the CMPA's three community development, development entities. Excuse me. So um, I don't want to amend your motion, but just to let you know Good that it point. does have to be contingent upon the approval. Subject okay, to the three development entities. Yes. Um, so um, basically what we have is the opportunity to extend the loan for an eight-month period as per the motion that has been made and seconded to CRA. I'd like no further comment from the public. So all those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, next action item. Thank you. And by the way, um, Mr. Merrill, thank you for attending today's CRA meeting to offer us the insight and um, reminding us that we have an unnamed stadium. And we're open to suggestions. Um, I appreciate being here, Mr. Mr. President and uh, members of the council. And we do have, I left out on, 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 on Councilwoman Canada Wins request of other things we are we are meeting why well, I say we can't keep squeezing um, Pensacola baseball we are have a we do have a meeting I think it's scheduled this Wednesday to see if we there's some things we can do jointly even as part of our contract with the city on maintenance and stuff like that and we'll just kind of see where that goes but we're looking at ways like I said we're a volunteer group that was appointed by you guys it's it's a very wide-ranging group of people and we talk everything as councilwoman Myers has done on handicap to get us there and we've talked about uh, you know all aspects of that stadium and and we do need to get in like a business but we've had a lot of different issues over the last seven to eight years to to get us where we are today and and now like i said we're not even a year old and we gotta get our hands around the budget thank you very much for having me thank you and we've got uh, another perhaps um lengthy item coming up so please keep your prompt your comments brief I just want to thank uh, Chairman Merrill for his service. Again, these are volunteers that serve our community, and uh, some that's been on there six years. With uh, well, they make less money than us, which is pretty hard to do. But I just want to thank you for your service. All right, thank you. Yes, Councilwoman Myers. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I too wanted to thank uh, Mr. Merrill for coming down here, and, and and we have volunteers on the CMPA who have been there for six, seven years. It's really uh, extraordinary to have uh, volunteers who put in the kind of 
hours for years that, that those volunteers have done. And I certainly don't feel like any comments that we've made reflect poorly on them at all. I mean, it's an extraordinary group of people, and I just uh, appreciate all of them. All right. Thank you. Next on the agenda, consideration of amendments to the Economic Development Agreement with disposition of property between the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Pensacola and Hicksart Technologies. And fellow CRA members, I want you to know that we do have um, representatives here for Hicksart available to answer questions um, and certainly uh, we have i feel like um and we have the obligation to utilize this opportunity to get the um the most accurate information that pertains to this um particular item mr hicks i'd like to go ahead and invite you to come up to the speaker's table as opposed to the stand-up microphone And at this time, um, Ms. Winterberg, I would like to invite you to speak to the CRA. And after that, um, we have Mr. Hicks available to answer questions. And remember, some of us are from the deep south, Ms. Winterberg. <laughs> As am I. Uh, thank you, CRA board. And to offer a little bit of background for those who aren't familiar with the Hicksart Economic Development Agreement, uh, back on October 11th and 13th of 2011, the CRA and City Council respectively approved the disposition of the CRA-owned property at 120 West Government Street as an economic development incentive to Hicksart Technologies. Uh, the CRA owns this property and it's currently used as a parking lot. Hicksart's current building is adjacent, right next door, uh, so they would be able to use the CRA parking lot to uh, build a larger office building and in conjunction create 100 additional new jobs. And if Hicksart fulfilled the terms and conditions of the agreement that was contained in your agenda package, the value of the property would be forgiven. So that is how the CRA, in um, one way, is able to incentivize job creation and, build, and business expansion. And in the past, this body has approved two amendments to that original agreement approved in October of 2011. Uh, the first was, let's see, March 5th, 2002, and the second was July 16th, I'm oh, sorry, 2012. Yes. July 16th, 2012, um, to amend the closing date and financing deadline. Um, and the first amendment allowed Hicksart additional time to increase their investment, uh, <coughs> expanding physically the size of the building as well as the financial investment. And the second amendment provided additional time to secure that additional financing. Uh, so in November of this year, uh, Mr. Hicks, who is the CEO of Hicksart, sitting beside me, um, approached the CRA staff as well as the chamber to inform us of an unexpected increase in construction cost. Uh, you'll see um, soil sampling tests were done at the property, um, and that is going to acquire a more extensive foundation system that w than what was originally anticipated. And also in your package, you'll see a detail of construction expenses, structural steel and impact resistant glass. Those total uh, the largest increase in construction costs for a total of $2.5 million. And Hicksart had originally budgeted $6 million uh, for the construction of the building. So Mr. Hicks' engineering and design team is currently working uh, to analyze the building design and see if there are any revisions that can bring the building back within their budget. Um, but Mr. Hicks is not going to be able to meet with his team until later in December. So that is the necessity behind this extension to the closing date and financing deadline uh, to allow him additional time to revise this building design. And as you know, there's only one CRA board meeting uh, in December, and currently the closing date and financing deadline are January 1st of 2013. And so if uh, Mr. Hicks' team is able to revise the design and bring the construction expenses back within the budget, uh, we can certainly proceed with this agreement. Um, and if, as we've discussed in the past, if this is the case, uh, Mr. Hicks and Hicksart, along with Beach Community Bank, uh, will be coming before you again in the future to request subordination of the CRA mortgage in favor of Beach Community Bank's debt financing and debt financing from the Small Business Association. So I have Mr. Hicks here uh, to answer any questions, and I'm also happy to answer them as well. Um, he did want to bring up today um, 
that during negotiations in this economic development agreement, the value of CRA's property at 120 West Government was uh, agreed upon at $750,000. In September of this year, Beach Community Bank, Hicks Arts Lender, ordered an appraisal of the property and the value was revealed at $565,000. Uh, so that value tied to the property is then uh, it pegs the value of our CRA mortgage that secures this property at 120 West Government. And that's certainly something that the CRA board has the discretion to amend as part of any terms in this agreement. Any questions? Okay. I will look to CRA members first to um, ask questions. Yes, sorry. President Wu. I'm amazed not only did you lose the weight, you've managed to keep it off and I think okay. even lose more. <laughs> Every time I look around to try to find you looking for a different person. Um, Mrs. Um, uh, Ryan uh, 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 Winterfield, um, the subordination, does that assume that the city assumes the loan if there's a default? Um, subordination has not come up to this board yet in an official capacity, but in terms of how that would work, um, in the event of any kind of default, if we were to take the third position, Beach Community Bank and then the Small Business Administration would have priority in terms of any kind of liquidation of assets. So we, we would be subordinated in terms of our ability to recap any losses in the event of default. But that, that's something that we will entertain at a later date. Um, right now, extending this closing date and financing deadline, as they are currently January 1, is sort of an immediate priority. The request is to amend these dates to April 1st. And then if the construction costs can be brought within budget, um, and then we can proceed. The subordination will come up at that time. I, I think this is the second issue in a row that I think I've come out to be the ogre because I'm the person who voted against the back of the house alone on the, we discussed this issue earlier. And uh, again, I, I want this to be very successful. I want this to work. Uh, my only concern is putting the city in a position of liability of having to repay the loan, but being in a much deeper financial situation than we were even in the first situation. Uh, so what you're saying to me, that the at what point would we make a decision of the subordination of the city to the loan? It'd be in the spring. Um, the actual uh, original contract agreement actually has the terms in which the subordination, it, it, it outlines the subordination rules and what was agreed upon. Right. Yes, there is a, a pretty hefty amount of documentation <coughs> that Hicksard and Beach Community Bank would need to submit as part of the subordination request. But at this time we are entertaining only an extension of the financing deadline, uh, the closing date and the financing deadline. Yes, Councilman Baer. I move that we extend the, uh, the closing deadline and the, what was the other? The finan financing. Financing to April 1st, 2013. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to extend both the closing date and financing deadline to April 1, 2013. I'd like everyone to raise their hand. Um, all those, well, excuse me, any further discussion on that motion? I apologize. Yes. Uh, do you know what day that is? I, I, yes. You want to make it April 2nd? <laughs> I, I, I was waiting for someone else, perhaps. <laughs> Councilman Bear. Uh, I would accept a friendly amendment to April 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I, I believe uh, friendly amendment um, April 2nd is what we'll be voting on. Any further comments from the council? Members of the public? All right. I again want to ask for a vote indicated by showing of hands. All those in favor? All right. That's a unanimous support of the motion for an extension to April 2nd, 2013. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Hicks. Thank you.
All right. Um, we have a discussion item, interlocal agreement between the City of Pensacola and Community Redevelopment Agency for administ administrative services as strictly a discussion item. Yes, Councilwoman Myers. Well, um, the last time this issue came up, uh, I voted uh, not to approve the interlocal agreement. Um, the problem is that, um, let me find it. The, prob the problem is that um, we pay, I believe, for um, uh, Ms. Winterberg Lipp's uh, salary. Is that correct? Yes, and half of Karen Montgomery. And half of Karen Montgomery. And the mayor has a policy that prohibits uh, council members, and I assume it applies to CRA members, from uh, communicating with uh, city employees other than through the mayor's office. And I, I have a, a real problem hiring someone, entering into an interlocal agreement uh, for the city to provide staff for the CRA that uh, we can't communicate with. I mean, no agency uh, under the sun would enter into such an agreement. Um, if you read the CRA Act, Florida Statute 163.356, our powers are very extensive and very broad, and so are our responsibilities. And I find that the interlocal agreement basically uh, hands over those responsibilities and uh, powers to um, the mayor's office. Now, um, so I, I don't think that we can, or at least I don't feel like I can perform my fiduciary duty to the CRA when I'm not allowed to talk with uh, the person who is working for the CRA. And uh, so I think that this uh, interlocal agreement should be amended to put language in there that uh, members of the CRA are um, able to um, have discussions and make inquiries of uh, our, the, the staff that we're paying for. Um, so for that reason, I, I will not be uh, supporting an extension of the uh, interlocal agreement as it is presently uh, uh, drafted. And um, I hope that uh, that you all will consider that factor uh, if uh, council should um, desire to um, obtain uh, staffing from, from the city. All right, thank you. Yes. Well, you know, being new to, to this whole new system of about, yeah, whether or not, I, I will have a hard time paying for a position when I can't get on the telephone and call this person up and say, I need some information, I need this, I need to schedule an appointment with you to cover for you to explain whatever it is. I don't want to have to pick up the telephone and call that person and then that person tell me I got to call somebody else to get permission to talk to you or to even schedule the appointment because that person's funding is coming from the CRA. So there should be something there with some type of uh, 
of uh, thing that we could work out as to how communication could flow to the persons or the people who on the board. And if that is not clear, I have a problem with it. Because what happens here is, if the mayor says, you got to come through me, uh, or the city administrator, who's been great, got to come through, got to call, make that appointment, that that's another level of bureaucracy for me. So I just need that type of communication cleared up as to what is our relationship as the CRA board members to people who are hired that we pay for. I just want a clear understanding of what that is. All right. Thank you. Um, yes, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that Mr. Seems Reynolds. To be, that seems to be a reasonable accommodation. Uh, I think the, the real issue, however, that we, and you've heard me speak of this before, uh, is that the, that the CRA is going broke. And at some point next year, uh, you won't have the money to hire a staff. And at that point, it's the city who will essentially uh, uh, subsidize your efforts as the CRA. And uh, when that happens, when those funds are no longer available, that's exactly what we'll have to do at the city is to then carve out some funds specifically for the staff of the CRA. Uh, that's, that's the real issue here. And, and uh, in regards to the communication, that certainly sounds like a reasonable accommodation I'm sure we can work through. But again, I encourage the CRA to take a hard look as to where you are with your finances and how we're going to prevent uh, essentially uh, uh, going broke next year. Thank you. All right, thank you. Councilwoman Pratt. All right, at the risk of bringing up a sore subject, um, one thing that I think um, I would be important in this agreement that um, got sort of overlooked when, because of many other issues when we considered it last time, um, at that time I had worked with um, a CRA specialist attorney and he, he encouraged the me as the chair to recommend that this um, CRA name someone as the executive director. It has come up a few times various ways, you know, on the, on the agreement with Hicksart or others. Who is the executive director? And I think that that is something that we need to spell out. Who is, who is the responsible person who carries out the wishes of this organization? And I, I understand that we could name the mayor, we could name Ms. Winterberg Lip, but that, that title is an important thing for a board to have named a specific person, whoever is in charge of, um, you know, it comes up in various contracts, who is the executive director. I just think that that's something that, that should be reflected in the agreement as it gets drafted. Thank you. All right, thank you. And one more time, Councilwoman Myers. I just wanted to ask a, a, a question and, uh, Councilwoman Pratt uh, brought up a good point. Could that person be a city council, a city council member? The executive director would need to have communication with the members of the board, which the okay. council member can't do. Right. Okay, okay. You, good point. Uh, well, that, that brings up the issue uh, of, sir, I, I think it's a very va valid issue um, I'm not sure how to, to address it, but uh, it could be that we could hire somebody. But uh, I, th I think it certainly warrants f further discussion. And that means someone that works for free. Right? Yeah, well. So, um, but I appreciate we've, um, I'd like to, um, unless anyone else is compelled to talk more about it, I appreciate that um, the discussion item, I think, merits homework um, on members' parts, much like um, Councilwoman Myers, as you provided, I think, some very good structure and framework, um, for instance, in our other item um, of business, that being the CMPA um, and the CRA. So I invite CRA members to, um, to offer, again, or to, to contribute. Um, to what Councilwoman Myers has asked us to consider, uh, as well as Councilwoman Canada Wynn regarding communication. Um, in information items, Ms. Winterberg? There are none. All right. Um, I would, um, at this time, new business. 
All right, you're using all your cards. Okay, but Council well, Mike. this is uh, under something different. Uh, what about old business? I just wanted to get see if we could put on the agenda for the next meeting an update on our signage uh, project that we uh, are interested in. We'll bring that up on the next agenda. Okay, thank all right. you. All right, I've just wrote that down. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, it's un. Fortunate right now because under new business I would like to have all members present um, and that's not the case but um, now that I have been reelected as chair um, I was going to and, and have the opportunity to recommend that we look at the CRA meetings as occurring as a separately scheduled meeting as opposed to having a bookend such as a committee of the whole. Um, we certainly have learned um, how important this agency is for furthering redevelopment in the um, defined area, the district. We have tremendous potential. We have responsibilities as a governing body and I believe that we as members as well as the public um, would have um, I, I think a better opportunity to both maximize their av availability and we would be maximized by receiving more input. Um, I did um, certainly recognize that staff would then need to be with us for a separate meeting but I think as you're newly uh, elected chair, I, I want you all to weigh in on uh, my proposal, please. Starting with you, Councilwoman Myers. Well, I, I think that's an excellent idea and I'm willing to make the motion that we um, have our, our CRA meetings on a different night than the Committee of the Whole or the City Council meeting. Second. All right, motion and a second. Yes, Councilwoman Pratt. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I do ask, though, um, if we could consider having them at a, at, during the daytime, if possible. Um, I, um, there, there are only so many days and evenings in the week, and a lot of them get filled up. But just for consideration, uh, we have new council members, and they probably, I was Canada Win always has afternoons free. So that might be our only option, but I think. Um, right. Okay. Councilman Beer. Uh, I think it's a great idea to have them at a different time. I don't necessarily think it needs to be on a different day. I think it needs to be at the call of the chair. So, um, you know, I would, I would like to amend the motion to state that, uh, that the CRA would meet at the designated time established by the chair. All right. Thank you. All right. And we have that motion and a second. Councilman Johnson. I'm good. All right, thank you. The, the only concern I have about that is um, there may not be consistency in, in the terms of times and meetings. And so you have this CRA, which is very, very important, and you don't necessarily have a scheduled time at these meetings. The, the president, which I, I know that you would do well at, at scheduling when it's time for us to have those meetings, but if there's no consistency in people, you'll say, okay, we're going to have a meeting. Will meetings be monthly? Uh, will meetings be every two weeks? Or what would that schedule be? I, I just would look for some consistency in that uh, for, uh, for the CRA board. Um, fellow members, may I weigh in on that? Well, okay. Um, I think Councilwoman Canada Wynn makes a very good point. I would strive to schedule um, regularly um, scheduled meetings so for instance w people could make their plans right off the bat I'm, I'm thinking the um, every other at this point we have the opportunity certainly to have a meeting preceding every COW meeting committee the whole meeting which is pr every two weeks um, certainly we have the opportunity to choose those other Mondays um, that are in between the regularly scheduled meetings. I think there's a lot of community, what I would call muscle memory, that um, 
meetings occur on Monday afternoons, for instance, at 3.15 or 3.30. And um, I would strive to use um, our staff to check with members to make sure that I, as chair, did not choose a date that was just absolutely a, a conflict um, for anyone on a regular basis. But um, I would, I would, I commit to making that um, a regularly scheduled meeting. Yes, President uh, Wu. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I uh, favor keeping it the way it is now. And one of the reasons it compels me to, to do that is, one, I've always favored having less meetings instead of more. And, uh, I mean, coming here two days, you know, a month, and then having to see our meeting when we do, I think cuts down on the number of meetings or times that we have to come up here. Uh, number two, and this is probably more compelling, is the folks that like to speak before us can come and cover two meetings at one time. Whereas somebody's working, it makes it much more difficult for the person to take off from work on two occasions to come on two different times to talk to both bodies. Thank, Thank you. you. And I've, I've certainly heard both sides and understand that. Um, so we have a motion that, that um, one more comment. Yeah, Council thank members. you, Mr. Chair. And you know, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Wu makes a lot of sense to me. and. I think I, I, I'm leaning towards just uh, leaving as is after hearing comments from all the other council people, so I'll be voting against this. Thank you. All right. The, the, I say something? Yes, the you only bet. other thing is when you, we look at our agenda here, by the time you're at a meeting for five hours, I'm brain dead by the time I get to the four-hour meeting. Okay, I don't know about the rest of the citizenry, but I'm here trying to filter through everything and I'm brain dead, okay? So unless we look at our entire agenda and say, okay, we got to do some issues here and let our presidents look through of, of, of our council as well as our CRA and say so we, we put some agenda items here, some agenda items there, and really look at agendas, we will still be in a position where we will have five and a half hour, six hour meetings. So this is an option. For us, it is, it is an option, uh, but I, I think looking at how long we are, we're here at meetings, and especially there are people that I've been in meetings, and our long meetings are just not new to the new form of government. But we've been here at meetings where people who have come to make comments at the regular council of the whole meeting leave because they are unable to make those comments or unable to do that. So I think that this is just an option because many cases our meetings are long too long all right uh, thank you count uh, maker of the motion councilman bear can i bring us back to the amendment to the amendment that i i sponsored <laughs> which i got a second for which has to do with giving you the ability to call the meetings i think it would be up to you if you wanted to have them proceeding the can committee the whole it would be up to you i, I believe empowering our a chairman of committees and hopefully at some point we'll have other committees but I think this gives you we voted for you at least a majority of us did to give you the power to be the chair of this committee of the CRA and I think it's it's incumbent upon you to select a time that we can all meet all right thank you very much okay I'm gonna make an exception third okay. comment on since it's an amended motion um. I'm, I'm in favor of the uh, amended motion. I, I do not like having the CRA meeting at the same time of the Committee of the Whole because it results in extremely long meetings. And I think we have a lot of important issues we need to, the CRA needs to spend a lot more time on. And uh, so for that reason, I, I am not in favor of having the CRA and the uh, CAL meeting on the same night. All right, thank you. I'd like at this time, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hands. Those, okay, I'm sorry. In favor. Yes, in Voting favor. On the amended motion? Or on, the amendment. on the amendment. Make amendment. it the main motion. Or, or we're it's not a substitute, uh, but to amend the main motion. So we're amending. To give the chair the discretion. Okay. okay. Right. So all in favor. Uh, I'd like some clarification. What what is the motion that we're voting on? This way, just at this point, there is a motion 
um, to amend your voting on the um, allowing the amendment to the motion, which was gives the chair the power to designate the meeting time. And we have someone bef um, from the public, Ms. Stubason. Yes, sir, I appreciate your allowing the um, public to weigh in on this. Uh, I believe if you look at the audience right now, there are about 20 individuals, I believe, who came to be here for a Committee of the Whole presentation, and they have endured already over an hour of waiting for this um, second meeting to start. Um, I, I've been here many times when you folks have rushed through the Committee of the Whole because there was something really critical that needed to be, I mean, through the CRA. And, and I believe the separation that you're suggesting is absolutely an efficiency um, de determination. I believe what Mr. Bear suggested is a very doable in that if you decide the interim Monday needs to be when y'all meet, if it needs to be a lengthy meeting, you could do that. But if it's going to be a brief 10 or 15 minute meeting, then you could make it the meeting just before. So I think having that option does allow you the flexibility to plan the meetings according to what the um, agenda of the CRA is. Y'all have missed a lot of informational stuff because the committee of the whole was too long and, and y'all just would skip it and say we'll talk about it next time. So I would really encourage this. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, Bear. Chairman Spencer, we're voting on the amendment to the original motion first, which is to give you the ability to set the time of the meeting. Correct. First. So, back to that vote. Those in favor of supporting the amendment to the motion, giving the chair the power, or the authority to choose the meeting times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six in favor, all those against? All right, Mr. Johnson, Councilman Johnson, Tahar, and President Wu. Thank you. That passes. Now, um, we, the main, yeah. now we need to entertain the main motion. So, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Again, the same six in favor, those opposed? All right, that passes six to three. Thank you, and thank you comments from the public. Um, we're still on new business, and I apologize, but again, for new members, you recognize we're convening. We are in the sunshine. This provides us um, the opportunity to conduct business, and I will be brief. Um, under new business, I am seeking the, the um, full support of the CRA board members and, and inviting the mayor to have to begin a discussion with county representatives and by the way let me back up my topic is the downtown technology park um, interlocal agreement and as you all know we have basic terms to that agreement we have as a CRA obligations repayment obligations that are have currently been established um, and as you recall we had a presentation that um, provided us sort of a vision into the future of the CRA's depleting resources and yet that was offset by the imminent obligation um, regarding our participation uh, with the county and the chamber in the uh, development of the downtown technology park. We have an opportunity, as I recall, to revisit those loan terms. Um, and I think it is wise for us to invite the mayor to begin those discussions with um, a county representative, uh, a county commissioner, and um, my suggestion is certainly not binding, but I know that the current president, Sandy Sansing, of the chamber um, weighed in in Sunday's uh, news journal offering us his opinions of the future of the chamber and addressed um, this technology park as well. So um, I think under new business, I, I would like to see the CRA invite or suggest that the mayor commence these conversations. 
I move that we ask the mayor to commence conversations on the technology park loan terms. Second. All right. All those in favor? Uh, any discussion? Mr. Chair, if I may? Yes, Mr. Reynolds, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think that's critical uh, simply because when we talk about the CRA actually going broke, that doesn't include the ten, up to $10 million that we have hanging over our head at the, at the technology park uh, based upon the current and a local. So I think it's critical that we, we start those discussions. Thank you. Right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Any further discussion? Yes, Councilman Johnson. Can we get them to approach the ECUA also to talk about that $19 million we owe over there? It, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, yeah it, I'll be supporting the motion. Thank you. All right. At this time, this is um, referring to the downtown technology park only. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? That passes unanimously. And that concludes, unless anyone has other new business, meeting is adjourned. Yes, I
from whom did we receive? No, from uh, I haven't learned her handwriting. <laughs> Is Councilman Myers in the audience? the City Council uh, workshop uh, committee to hold the order. Um, well, I would like to welcome everybody, uh, especially the three new members, Councilman uh, Tahar, Councilman Wingate, Councilman Bear, and returning Councilwoman uh, Vice President Jewel Cannon Wynn. Uh, good to have all of you all with us look forward to a very productive year. Uh, to that end, uh, just a, a few brief remarks if you will indulge me. Uh, one of my goals is to try to expedite our meetings. Uh, when I talk to people in other locales and tell them of the length of our meetings, they are absolutely aghast. Uh, most folks meet between one and two hours. and. Uh, and I, I don't want to hear that they do less important work, you know, or, or whatever, but uh, they managed to get it done. Uh, toward that end, uh, I'm going to do, um, there's, I believe, at your place, council rules, uh, which says that each council member is allowed to speak two, two times. And I'm going to be an ogre and uh, adhere to that. Uh, however, if you as a council person feel like the person speaking that would like to speak a third time has something important to say at any point you may move that they have a third opportunity to speak a third time and we'll take a vote on it and if the majority feels that way then the person gets to speak but we're, what I'm going to try to prevent is people speaking over and over and over and over again the other thing is uh, we have a time limit uh, when people come to address us again I'm going to be an ogre uh, the time limit is reached. I am going to ask that person or say to that person, thank you very much. Now, if you feel that that person is stating something very important, and a lot of times they'll look at me and they say, can I have one or two minutes? 
Uh, well, my dilemma is I can't pick A and think they're important enough to have two minutes and then look at B and say they're not important to have two minutes. When the time is up, the time is up. However, if any of the council members feel that the speaker has something this important, they may, through the chair, ask a question of the speaker and that person then can respond to the question that's asked. So it's not that their rights are completely going to be obligated, but I am not going to get into a posture of allowing one person five and a half minutes and the next person four minutes and four minutes only. Uh, also, I am going to ask the council for their help uh, in how we may streamline our meetings. And if you have any suggestions, if you would tell our council executive, Dr. Cox, and she will compile those. Uh, again, I'm not trying to take anybody's rights away, but um, I think uh, five and seven hour meetings really are not reasonable. Um, so having said that, we now move in a board, uh, board f a forum. Is there anybody that has uh, signed up to speak? Okay. Not seeing anybody. Uh, the next order of business is appointment, Board of Trustees, Firemen uh, Relief and Pension Fund. And we have one person who has been nominated, uh, Verona Diaz, the incumbent, and there are no other uh, nominees. Move to approve by acclamation. Second. Move and approval. All of, uh, any discussion? Discussion uh, in the audience? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on. Number two, Pensacola Community Initiative Program. PCIP, I believe, is the second item that we have here. Oh, no, we're moving to external boards, authorities, and commission. And I believe that there is a sheet to be handed out with the uh, assignments of different committee members, council members to the different committees. I would like to thank Council, uh, council Executive Cox for her work on putting this committee together. I believe she tried to accommodate the wishes of most people to be on the boards they'd like to be on. If there are some boards that you are not on or any boards that you're unhappy with being on, please talk to Dr. Cox and we'll see what we can do about making some adjustments. Okay. Item number three is council, city council. Dr. Pratt. Yes, Dr. Pratt. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to comment that um, in the, in the um, communication with Dr. Cox, I also let her know that I would like to step down from the CMPA so other council members have that option. It's a different appointment process, but, but that should be coming up as well. So if there are others who are interested in serving on that board, that will be an option for you. Okay, very good. The other thing, and I'm, I'm glad you stopped me, I also heard uh, from Mr. Baer that we need to get some people on the uh, development uh, committee, and if you have an interest in that, please uh, let Dr. Cox and I know. Ace. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion on committee members? Okay. Do I hear a motion to move that we approve what we have? Uh, so moved. Thank you. Second. second. Okay. Moved and second. Any discussion? Discussion audience? All favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Moving on to uh, item three, council meeting dates. Move to approve. Okay, second. we have a moved approval. A second. Yes, Councilman. Well, you, you, uh, I don't know if anybody's looked at those dates, but you know what January 7th is, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little game. It's the national championship game, and I don't know if we want to maybe make sure that we leave a little bit early, maybe make the meetings cease at 6 p.m. Or uh, I'll be glad to have the. Uh, uh, um, motion to meet a different date councilman no i was just going to say we'll just make sure that councilman spencer does not schedule a cra meeting at the same time <laughs> as committee of the whole we should be good okay well would y'all like to take any further action or will okay all right 
I'd just like to make note, maybe we'll have a light agenda that day that won't uh, make us drag uh, late. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman. All right, moving on to mayor communication and actions. Uh, uh, there has been a request that we move item 21 up to item 1, which we have done. And so with that, uh, Mr. Reynolds, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. The subject is qualified target industry tax refund incentive for Project Mountain. The recommendation is that City Council approve a resolution supporting the award of a State of Florida qualified target industry tax refund for Project Mountain. Move the approval. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Council? Any discussion, audience? All in favor? Aye. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Councilman. You know, normally aren't we briefed on these projects before we just give a blank check? I know that we were well, briefed on the I believe that the, the uh, themes the were sent out in the packet to council members prior to the yeah, meeting. Absolutely. Now, if you have further questions, we'll be glad to elaborate on any questions you might have. Okay, because I know that we, when we, we were briefed at this last one, that we were supposed to have a meeting on that Monday um, that was canceled on that Sunday morning prior to the meeting that we were going to have concerning this last uh, Operation Hi Hat, I believe was the name of it. Um, I just would like to have more information, if I could, uh, from here on out uh, to support this. And I also noticed on this that uh, it appears that the staff person, um, the staff person for this for the city is. Uh, is a part-time vendor employee. Do we know if he has any connection to any of these folks at all? Um, um, I'd like to get a disclosure from him. I think to move, you know, so quickly on this, and when we have someone that's a part-time vendor employee, um, not knowing if they have any association with this outfit, I just hate to give a blank check for that. I'm just, I'm just not sure about the, uh, uh, doing that. I know that we all uh, sit bef uh, before the uh, audience and others as being. Uh, stewards of our tax dollars and uh, I just without having the uh, disclosure uh, I'd like to really table this or I won't be voting in support of it until we uh, get some assurances that there's no um, inappropriate connection um, and, and some type of disclosure from the staff person that's not doing business with them maybe privately as we um, approve this pu very uh, uh, this public project uh, using tax uh, payers dollars so I've just got a real problem with that. Um, I'm not sure where to go with that. Can we table that until we can get a disclosure from him, Mr. Chair, well, or, uh, Mr. Uh, President? It, it, what I would like to do, with your permission, is ask if Mr. Reynolds could have anything he could throw on that might enlighten us, and then move from that point. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, President. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Uh, what I would suggest is that uh, we certainly can have that information available on Thursday. Uh, obviously, this still has to pass the. Uh, uh, the city council meeting proper uh, and then, then you can take a look at that information and make a determination from there if that uh, would yeah I just I just would uh, th thank you very much mr. Reynolds I just like to have some kind of insurances that when we things were brought before us and we have a you know a person that has a business outside of here that's been the staff contact person that we ensure that the public the taxpayers the one that are actually signing this check that there's no um, improper relationships there I think it's very important and I think it's a very you know, an easy fix. Um, if we could just have some kind of statement, if he does business with these people on the outside uh, of City Hall, um, uh, you know, when he's doing business with them privately, if he does business with them publicly also. You know, I've, we've talked about this over and over and over again, and I don't know if it just doesn't sink in or maybe I'm just not communicating it right, but I just feel extremely uncomfortable um, sign, you know, given, uh, 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 you know, approving something like this when we have the contact person who has a private law firm and could be representing these people privately um, as he represents the city of Pensacola here in a, in a public uh, way. I just, I, you know, from here on out, I'd like to see some type of disclosure. You know, we just had a CRA meeting, and the first item of business was for Mr. DeHar and Mr. Spencer to disclose their ownership and property in the CRA district, but yet we have a vendor part-time employee c cutting a deal for the taxpayers without knowing if he does business with these folks privately. I just, I just think it's entirely inappropriate. I think that we must have these disclosures, and if we can get something in writing, um, I'm still not going to support it tonight, but I think that we need to start this process. And I, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, this came before this new council because th they're going to hear me say this over and over, and I really don't enjoy saying it. 
But I think at some point we've got to have these disclosures. We ask uh, the city city council members that sit on the CRA for this, and I think it's entirely appropriate to ask a private, an attorney who has a private law practice if he does business with them privately and publicly because I think that that leaves room for some type of something improper to happen. I'm not saying it is or not, but I don't know until I uh, to see uh, this client list. Thank you. I believe where we are at this stage is that we have had one council member that has uh, expressed concerns. So what we need to decide as a group is that concern apply to the entire council or do we move forward with the item? And that is the decision of the council. So uh, we need to have, I believe we've had a motion and a second and, and you've expressed concern. So uh, if you, I don't know if you'd like to put forward a motion to, to not move with this item or not, or. Uh, well, can I make an amended motion or would this? That's the, what we're, we're, what I'm looking uh, for. Can I make amended motion that we approve this uh, 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 under the premise that we will be provided a, a list of, uh, 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 from the uh, staff uh, person that, uh, uh, that they give us assurances that they do not do business with them privately. Um, um, that we are uh, the, this this, uh, uh, the, the, this entity that's before us that he does not do business with them privately in any way. Um, yesterday, today, or uh, uh, we can't really talk about the future, but um, just some type of assurances. Uh, uh, I think uh, something in writing um, would be uh, would be good. But um, um, I think the council knows where I'm going with this, and if I you know maybe someone else can add to it. But just some type of assurance that, that we're not doing something that, that might come back and, and be, uh, appear to be inappropriate later for all of us here. Um, so um, uh, I'll, make, I'll, make the, I'll make the motion that, uh, that we approve this on the premise that uh, uh, under the basis that we do get some uh, written assurances that this uh, individual, this staff person, this part-time vendor uh, staff person does not do business with them privately also. Thank you. Second. Okay, so we move in second discussion. Okay. Now, I, I do have one question. Sir. Will that information be provided th by Thursday? So will this issue be on mm -hmm. the uh, council agenda on Thursday, or is this something that has to go back for further review? I, th I think that would depend on the action we take now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I would probably just like to make one observation. And Mr. Then, uh, you, uh -huh. would we'll like to speak? Yes. If I may, Mr. Just, President. Yes. Uh, uh, let, let me finish. Yes, uh, sir. I think the statement made, uh, if I understand you correct, Congressman Johnson, and you help me, is that uh, on one hand you have disclosing whether you do business with another party or not. Uh, what I've heard from you since that point is that you have then moved from that position to stating that you cannot do business with the person and then recommend that person come forward which I think is completely a different thing than what we started with. Uh, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I'm trying to get a clarification. When we do the CRA, we do a disclaimer of whether we have property or whatever. Uh, I don't know if that then says that you can't do anything with the CRA. Am I making any sense? Sure. So I'm just trying to get a clarification on your intent, whether it is uh, you make a disclosure, A, or B, you, know, you make disclosure, and that disclosure precludes you from then ever doing any business with the person coming uh, before the body. Could, uh, could, could I get the city attorney to weigh on this? What would be the most appropriate way? You know where I'm getting, Mr. City Attorney. Could I uh, lean on you to give us some advice in this regard? Thank you. Uh, I, would, I would think with the uh, concurrence of the city administrator that perhaps the best procedure would just to be to limit it to this one-time uh, instance and uh, obtain the disclosure if that's necessary and keep it on the agenda for Thursday. Does that help, Councilman? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that, but then every time it comes up, I'm going to continue saying this. So should we get like a form letter that I, that I can pass out uh, um, every time this issue comes up or well, I hate to drag everybody through right. this every no, time no, I, no. Uh, I, I why don't uh, we dispose of this issue now in the manner the attorney has recommended 
And then on the new business, uh, I don't see it inappropriate if you make a motion that we move toward making some strong recommendation to doing what you said. If you have, if you're a, a doing or know the person or doing business with that person, then there should be a requirement to disclose. I, I don't see any problem with that, Mr. Bear. I have a question for Mr. Reynolds, if that's okay, Mr. Sure. President. Sure. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, I know that uh, there's a staff member assigned, and we've kind of talked about him, I think it's probably Mr. Asmar, um, that's been assigned to this particular project. But is this not a project that came through the chamber? It did. That's correct, Councilman. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Reynolds, you had wanted to speak earlier, and I'm... I'm, uh, I'm good. You're good. Thank okay. you, Mr. President. Uh, would that be satisfactory with you, Councilman? Will we approach it that I'd way? I'd like to hear from other councils. Certainly, okay, certainly. So. Okay. Yes, Councilman Myers. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. As I understand the motion, uh, we're asking simply that uh, this person disclose any type of business relationship he has had in the past or presently with... Uh, this uh, project. Uh, that was what I was it's trying to get clear. It's simply Kitch. a disclosure, just like we do on the CRA. Right. right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Councilman Johnson would have to be. Yeah, that'd be satisfactory. And again, we'll probably have to revisit this again, sure. possibly down the road. And I do apologize for no, no, uh, no, not at my all. indulgence here. Not Thank you. All. Not at all. Okay. All right. So, if I understand where we are correctly. Uh, we are going to ask uh, for the disclosure statement. Uh, we're going to move on whether we approve at this point the item that's in front of us. And in the future, we're going to uh, discuss that later about making the disclosure if you do doing business with the person. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. President, yes. are we voting on the amendment? Councilman yes. Johnson's yes. amendment? Okay. Yeah, on the amendment, yes. As uh, soon as we finish discussion. Okay. Any other discussion among council? Uh, audience? Okay, everybody in favor of the amendment? Aye. Say aye. 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 And then the clerk has requested those who say no to raise their hand so they can get a tally. Anybody opposed? Okay, we have two against. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to our next item, Mr. Reynolds. Yeah, we have to vote on the main That's motion. That's right. I'm sorry. And now we're voting on the main motion. All in favor? Okay. All opposed? Okay. You know. Okay. Now we're item, uh, right along. let me see, four, I believe it is. Thank you, Mr. President. Item four is subject, Pensacola Community Initiatives Program, PCIP 2012-2013 Awards. The recommendation is that City Council approve the funding for six Pensacola Community Initiatives Programs PCIP grant applications totaling $25,406. Move the approval. Second. second. Move the second. Discussion? Okay. Uh, yes, Councilman. Uh, just real quick, I, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, just looking over this, I see that there's money left over from last year, there's going to be money left over from this year. I, I know I'm going to put more effort in when this comes about to try and get more of my associations to step up and actually use all the money. It's, it's tough to find something in government where you don't use all your money. So uh, I just wanted to say that, and I, I hope that the rest of us can do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. Anybody in the audience? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Carries your hands. Okay. Thank you, President. Mr. President, the uh, next item on the agenda is subject, Pensacola Community Initiatives Program, PCIP Program Amendment, TAC LTA, LTU Approval of Funded Pensacola Community Initiatives Program, PCIP Projects. The recommendation is that City Council authorize staff to approve license to use right-of-way applications associated with funded Pensacola Community Initiative Program, PCIP Projects within the public right-of-way. Move the approval. Second. Okay, move to second discussion from council. Audience, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, next item is number seven. Number six, Mr. President. Number six, please. Subject is 2013 LEAP project. The recommendation is the city council approve the route and accept maintenance of the LEAP trail following completion. Move the approval. Second. 
And Mr. President, we have a we have a presentation on this, and I'd okay. also like the opportunity to recognize the members of the LEAP class that are in, in attendance tonight. Uh, could I have everybody that uh, is in support of this project please stand up so City Council can uh, take a look at you? Wow. <laughs> the majority, if not all, of those are, are actually uh, members of the current LEAP class, which unfortunately uh, for them, I am also a member of. So uh, uh, now, if, uh, if we may, we'll jump right into our, uh, our program. Okay. This is Mr. Robert Bender, who is heading up the project. Thank you. I appreciate your time this evening. Uh, this is the Pensacola uh, Class 2013 Leadership Pensacola Class Project. It's the Leap Trail. Uh, to go into a little bit about what is Leadership Pensacola, it is a program of the Greater Pensacola Chamber of Commerce. It's comprised of 50 individuals from throughout the community. We are uh, nominated for this uh, program. Uh, we submitted an application and then it voted on by the, by the chamber. And uh, we, we also have the support of our companies. So we have uh, some of the companies that are here. We have some private individuals that own their own companies. We have uh, Golf Power, Baptist Hospital, Sacred Heart, uh, and, and, and uh, members of the chamber and everything like that, uh, along with this, with the city council, uh, with Mr. Reynolds. Uh, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. Uh, and then uh, as part of the curriculum, each class is required to do a project to benefit the community. Uh, we solicit these funds through the chamber's uh, foundation and, and pay for the project. And then we have to find an entity to manage the project once it's completed. Some of the previous class projects that, that have been done uh, was in 1997, they did Habitat for Humanity. Uh, one year, they did the Brownsville Middle School. They helped with the repave the parking lot and with the prom. Uh, this uh, program also helped launch Pensacola's recycling program, uh, getting 10,000 recycling kits to the residents uh, in 2008. And then most recently, we renovated the USO facilities at the Pensacola NAS and at the Pensacola International Airport. So the project this year is the Leap Trail. It's a leisure exercise activity and play trail. Uh, this isn't just something for fitness junkies. Uh, this is something that, uh, that the community can gather and use recreationally uh, at, at their leisure or uh, for someone who wants to use it as uh, a way to work out. Uh, as you can see, we, we target everyone in the community from Soccer moms, those using the Roger Scott facility, which is, is part of where the trail runs through. Runners, bikers, etc. Uh, and again, the, the purpose of this project is to promote healthy lifestyle and living and give the pe residents of Pensacola and surrounding area an opportunity to, to live healthy. Uh, the trail is going to start near the Pensacola International Airport entrance, go down. 12th Avenue to the, uh, to the Roger Scott Athletic Complex entrance. It'll run through Roger Scott where a inclusive playground will be located. Uh, it will uh, go around the tennis courts and meet with Summit, the northbound lane of Summit, going down around the airport and then tying in a Jerry May Garden Drive. Uh, and then we will be including uh, the path along Jerry May Garden uh, for that. We also have workout facilities, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, the map didn't come out very well, but uh, that's the, the path that I, I just proposed. There will be different uh, amenities and features along the way. We'll have picnic tables, benches, uh, way stations, things like that uh, to dispose, dispose of trash and, and for, again, other features that the community can partake in as they're using this trail. These are the types of workout stations that we propose. These are among the many we are currently in the process of, of uh, indicating where we can have these locations uh, and plan on having uh, hopefully greater than 10 workout stations along this 4.1 uh, mile path. The 
uh, inclusive playground. Uh, for those of you that may not be aware of it, it's one for uh, maybe handicap accessible children or those with uh, that have other disabilities that makes it easier for them to to play uh, side by side with fully abled children. We have uh, started this project in October. It was voted on by our class of 50 members and uh, we have since formed committees and working out budgets. We've finalized the, the path of the trail and, uh, and so we're here asking for, for the right to use all that land along the right of way. The project has to be turned over when we graduate in May. So this is a short time frame, uh, just over six months that we look to have this project completed fully. Uh, we're looking at funding these through private donors, through uh, class members donating their own resources, through businesses, grants, uh, and in-kind donations through uh, companies in the Pensacola area. We already have a lot of marketing in, in the works. We have a Facebook page, a website. We've started a brick and paver campaign. Uh, we sponsored uh, two water stations for the Pensacola Marathon. Uh, and so here are some of the, again, that it didn't work out very well, but the, uh, some of the members wearing their Leap Class t-shirts during the run and a screenshot of our, of our website. So the, what we're asking is why Leap? Uh, we found a, a, a nice acronym that worked for it. This is a, a lasting tribute to the LEAP program. It, it serves as a reminder of these projects that the, they have done before for the community. Uh, we can recognize those to, to know that, you know, the class of 1990 did something that helped promote literacy or that one of the classes helped with the, uh, the swimming flags up Pensacola Beach. That was another LEAP class project that helped promote the swim safe. Um, and so it's uh, positive public relations for the community. Uh, this is something that all the class members can, can put into. We can have people from outside the community come and help join in, in building the trail. Uh, it's year-round enjoyment, and um, it's a destination for community events. So I appreciate your time in presenting this project to the class of 2013. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a, a, a very fine report, and I hope you took note that your alumni, uh, Councilman Baer, stood uh, when y'all came in here. So, uh, yeah. uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to say this is a great uh, project. It addresses a, a big need that we have in, in this state, in this community, and uh, my hat's off to you all. When we did our LEAP project, I'm sure Andy's was much better than ours, but we, we we really just cleaned up a cemetery. That's all we really did. Um, we had a uh, Beautify Pensacola uh, project, and our original plan was to buy a pelican and put it somewhere, one of those big pelicans, and thankfully we didn't do that. So we cleaned up that cemetery that's really overgrown off of Cervantes, which really needs to be cleaned up again, actually. But uh, I applaud you on this, and, and your fundraising efforts, I think, are going to have to be pretty significant to afford this. And my one question is, when you say it has to be turned over, I'm assuming that gets turned over to the city. Is that right, Mr. Reynolds? Yes, Councilman Bear, that is correct. And essentially, we would incorporate it into, since it is all city land or city right away, we would incorporate it into our normal uh, uh, operational schedules for maintenance and et cetera. Okay, great. Well, thank you all very much for being here. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman. Yes, it's a great project. I, I had that similar idea, but, you know, I wanted it more in District 6 or District yeah. 7, so you, you beat me to that. However, I, I do all of the equipment and everything. I just wanted to know what cost would that be up on our parks and recs to maintain that? It is four miles. Is it about four miles? And it's going to have equipment. It's going to have all of that. So it's going to come with a cost. I know that the airport does a lot of uh, right away, and they have a maintenance and lawn contracts and all of that. But how does that actually figure into dollars? And if I may, Mr. President, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Vice President. Uh, the, the, the ultimate question is, or the answer to the ultimate question is, is that it's unknown at this time. However, since we do have the regularly scheduled maintenance in these areas anyway, it's something that we have to maintain as it is. Uh, it's all on areas that essentially, uh, except for a small uh, piece along Summit, along our, our, our uh, 
uh, actually maintained by either the airport or, or uh, Roger Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, because of that, uh, you know, th that ultimate cost will be minimal, uh, especially when you balance that with the three hundred to four hundred thousand uh, uh, dollar capital investment that's being made. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. President. And I think this is a great idea. I support this a hundred percent. And uh, just a couple of quick questions. If uh, I know that we're near the airport, has Homeland Security been that we ran this by them uh, seriously I mean because there's some talk uh, the tennis courts yes. um, at Rogers Scott tennis courts about this very idea Mr. Bill Be Kellenberger brought this idea up a couple of years ago to me and then I think there was some homeland security issues we have near full thank you uh, councilman we have fully vetted this with uh, the airport uh, they are in support of it uh, it did take a while to work through those issues Sure. Uh, but uh, uh, we now have their blessing, and uh, we're excited about moving forward. Well, I think it's a great project, and I really support that, and I appreciate everything that LEAP does to all you guys. It's, uh, I know they were involved in the recycling effort in 2008, which I was a big proponent for, and just appreciate everything you all do. You make a tremendous, tremendous difference in the community. I think this is a great, worthwhile project, and I really look forward to walking that trail. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Reynolds, does this require action on the part of council? Uh, normally, this would not require action on the part of council, but we specifically wanted to bring it in front of council so we could have your support, and we could also mention that, frankly, as part of our fundraising efforts. And I made a motion. Okay, Mr. motion. Do, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Now, we're making a motion and a second to... Well, I moved at the beginning, I moved the approval of this recommendation. Recommendation. Okay, so. good. Move and second. Any other further discussion? Yes, Councilwoman. Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that I, I really love this project, and I think uh, the the playground is badly needed. We don't have enough uh, accessible playgrounds for children with d disability or universally designed playgrounds. They're very expensive. And I look at this as a three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar gift to the citizens, and I, I think it's wonderful. And it will be a gift to us that we could uh, never afford any time in the near future. It's a great project, and I fully support it, and and really admire you all for for doing it. It's fabulous. Thank you, Councilwoman. Anybody else on council? Okay. Anybody in the audience? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. All, any opposed? Yeah, unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. The next item on the agenda is subject FY 2013 unencumbered carryover budget resolution. The recommendation is that the, the resolution amending the fiscal 2013 budget be approved. Move. So moved. Second. Okay, move and second. Discussion, Council? Yes, Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. President. And I just would ask for um, clarification on the gas fund. It's a $2.5 million carryover, and I just want um, clarification on, okay. on how that's moving. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Reynolds? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, that, that funding will be go, was, is, is what was not expended when you approved the, uh, the CNG stations. Uh, and so we still have yet to move forward with, uh, we have one built, but we still have the others available, and that's what that funding will be used for. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, yeah. Any, any uh, discussion uh, further Mount Castle? Any discussion in the audience? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, cash and well, I, I know we, we I, I don't have a uh, opposing thing, but I do have, maybe I can get with uh, the Sanders Beach. I, I want to know, why are we paying twenty thousand dollars for linen? I mean, it's it, it's only it says linen. So if a business, if a organization uses the facility, aren't those costs included in the rental and usage of the facility? If I may, Mr. President, uh, Ms. Vice President, uh, essentially what what that is for is for the ability to contract out for linen services for for the organizations that then come in and 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 rent the facility, and then we are reimbursed for that as part of that rental fee. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, Mr. Reynolds. 
The next item on the agenda is item number eight. Subject, conclusion of negotiations. Transfer of Pensacola Energy's Pensacola Beach franchise to the City of Gulf Breeze. The recommendation is that City Council approve the agreement providing for the transfer of Pensacola Energy's Pensacola <coughs> Beach franchise to the City of Gulf Breeze for the total sum of $470,000. Move the approval. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Council? Yes, Councilman Johnson. Uh, yes, uh, I tried to find this earlier. I was looking through the 500 pages or so that we had for CRA and City Council today, and I... I tried to find out, it, does this uh, agreement um, demand that the uh, Gulf Breeze uh, Gas buys their gas through a, uh, Pensacola Energy? Do we know? Mr. President, Mr. Suarez can answer that as well as the city attorney. They both worked hard on this issue. And then also I'd like to further, I have another question while he's there. Um, legal fees to date. What have we spent on legal fees to date for this particular issue? Do we have a number on that? Thank you, and I might have more questions. Thank you. On the legal fees, Mr. President, we can certainly uh, see what that is and have that available by Thursday. I, I don't have those in front of me right now, but we can get that for you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mr. President, Councilman Johnson, um, this agreement does not include gas supply. We are negotiating gas supply separately from this agreement. Frankly, um, the reason that it's taken as long as it has to finally reach a conclusion is because it was so difficult to try to negotiate a combined agreement for both the transfer of the franchise territory as well as uh, gas supply. Um, it, it's been a very long and painful process. Um, the best resolution we could arrive at is to go ahead and get this particular part of the puzzle completed as we continue to negotiate gas supply. Um, Gulf Breeze really only has two sources of gas supply, Pensacola and Okaloosa gas, mm -hmm. and um, that means the likelihood is that we will continue to sell them gas in some form or fashion as time goes on. Did, what, let me ask you, uh, comparatively, what, what, how do we stack up against Okaloosa gas? I mean, if, if they have the, I'm sure that they're just going to buy uh, the cheapest that they can from the cheapest supplier they can. How do we stack up against them? And uh, historically, who do they buy, have they bought their gas from? Historically, they've bought virtually all of their gas from Pensacola, and they continue to do so. They okay. do buy a small uh, quantity of their supply from Okaloosa Gas, and, and that's really prudent on their part. Um, they're dependent upon, and up until just a few years ago, they were totally dependent upon a pipeline that goes underneath the, the bay uh, along the Three Mile Bridge, and um, that's risky to have one supply feed for a system like Gulf Breeze feeding 4,000 plus customers. Um, roughly, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, something like that, uh, they did make a, a, enter into an agreement with Okaloosa Gas and, and uh, achieved a connect with them so they could have an alternative source of supply. They need to really purchase gas from both sources because the same thing could happen if they just discontinued purchasing from Pensacola and cut off the pipeline. They're, now they're at the mercy of one line feeding them from Okaloosa. So uh, it, it just, it, it's prudent operating procedure to have at least two sources. Yeah, and, 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 and just to tack on that, so how do we compare to them as far as price? Is our price uh, very close to Okaloosa ga gas when we wholesale gas out to Gulf Breeze gas? Are we in the same ballpark? Are we quite a bit higher? If, or, I mean, where, are we, where do we f fall in that regard? I don't know exactly what the uh, comparison is currently, but we're very close. Um, I, in the past, I'm sure we've been cheaper because they continue to buy most of their supply from Pensacola, even today. Um, but certainly, Okaloosa is going to be in the ballpark because they get some of their supply from uh, the same pipeline that we do, Gulf South Pipeline. They also have a second connect with Florida gas transmission, which is, uh, as I understand it, a bit of a higher price transportation source. Uh, and then they buy their gas from a different supplier than we do. We buy ours from BP. They get theirs from another, I'm not sure who, but currently. But uh, and, and then the other question uh, is that um, uh, we, with this agreement, and I believe I read in there, I just want a verbal reassurance from you that uh, they, uh, Escambia County, all, uh, they have agreed now that um, the rest of Escambia County that uh, that we will be the exclusive provider um, for the gas services for the rest of Escambia County, with the exception of a small area in Century, Florida. Correct? Is that's our have, intent. That has been re 
affirmed now in re a recommitment or a commitment from Escambia County now that, that we will be their only provider? It's our understanding that Escambia County staff is willing to approve an agreement uh, of that nature. Uh, this, this city council is the first to vote on this agreement. Next will be the city of Gulf Breeze city council, followed by the Escambia County Commission. So if all three entities do not agree, then the agreement does not go forward. Okay. So if we, if we approve this tonight, then we still have Gulf Breeze and Escambia County um, for their, their approval of this deal. That's correct. And uh, without, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. President. And, and just to flesh out a little more of what Mr. Suarez said, uh, we wouldn't be bringing uh, this settlement agreement uh, to this council uh, unless we had the assurances of the mediator uh, who I remind everyone we had a we, we had a former Florida Supreme Court justice to do this uh, that both Gulf Breeze and uh, Escambia County has a, have at least pledged informally to approve this agreement. <coughs> okay, you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, and I've read through a lot of the backup and saw the letter from uh, Mayor Zimmern over there, and I think that she made some excellent points in there, and I think it makes sense for us to do this at this time. And and I'd ask Mr. Reynolds a few questions about this. It looks like to me that the impact to, uh, I'm well, we were getting about $21,000 a year uh, based on the June 14th uh, information that came out from former President Hall. Uh, that was about the estimated annual impact is 21000 is that correct? That was, that was essentially, Councilman Bear, a long-term average. Um, okay. Frankly, the last few years we've actually been broke even or even lost a little money on it. Okay. And so this price of, what, 470000 is that what we're going to have coming in right now uh, from them, is that correct? The, for the, for the, for the transfer franchise. of the franchise, right. and then we will continue, assuming we continue to sell them gas, and I have every reason to believe that we will. And I, I think it's important that we make this, you know, that, that we work with them. If we want to continue to supply gas to them, I think it makes sense for us, be given their proximity um, to the beach, I, I think it makes sense for us as a, as a seller of gas to be, um, you know, to be proactive about having this agreement with them, giving you know, them this, we're not just giving it to them, they're paying us pretty, a pretty good sum for it, and then trying to go after that gas business from them. But hopefully at some point in the future we can have a steady profit from it and not, not lose money on it. Or well, that's certainly our intent, and I would like to point out that it's been the intent of both cities all along to serve Pensacola Beach, the businesses and the residents there, and uh, coming to a conclusion will allow that to move forward. Thank you. Okay. Council. Yes, um, I just wanted to comment on the neatness of this form. Um, I don't know who drafted it, um, but I've been reading through a number of legal documents in this uh, agenda package here and uh, some that aren't in, in, on our agenda. And what, what I have found is that the names of the persons who sign legal documents is not typed or printed on the document. And so you have to literally, I would have to hire a handwriting expert to decipher the signatures on those documents. And I think it's really important that we have nice, clean documents like this. Uh, on this document... Uh, um, Councilwoman, uh, I think what you're raising is a very, very important point, uh, but I don't know if it's the right time to do it now, but I would well, encourage you to bring it up because I believe that is something we can take care of very easily well, and it's very important. Okay, I, I just lost. But I, but I, I have, thank you for raising the I issue. I have raised the issue before. If I'm asked to vote on something from now on yes. and it's a legal document, I want to know uh, who's signing it. Yes. And that's one thing I like about this document. It's clean right. and it's uh, well so, put so together noted. and thank I'll you. support it. But it's an excellent suggestion. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Vice President. Okay, one question here. Did Ex Will Excambia County give ESP, or do we have the sole franchise rights for gas in Excambia County other than Century, or is that something that's being negotiated? We presently have an agreement with Escambia County for the exclusive franchise rights to sell natural gas 
through 2045 in all of Escambia County with the exception of a small area that the town of Century serves. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay. No, we're just going to help our returning councilwoman refer to that to our entity as Pensacola Energy. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're yeah. all struggling oh, with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I, I have very high hopes this will go through. And uh, the only comment I'll make is in case anything doesn't go through is that the director of natural gas keep in mind that these huge ships that park at our dock, one of them is uh, expressly for laying pipeline. That's what they do. And so... With that, uh, any other discussion in the, house, uh, in the audience? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? So that's unanimous. Thank you very much, Mr. Swartz. Mr. Reynolds, number 11, uh, 10. Airport authorization for work order number two. Item number nine, Mr. President, is subject airport work order number two, Atkins North America Incorporated Design Services. Rehabilitation of the Corporate General Aviation Apron and installation of an aircraft taxi lane. The recommendation is that City Council approve work order number two with Atkins North America Incorporated, covering design services for the rehabilitation of the Corporate General Aviation Apron and the installation of an aircraft taxi lane at Pensacola International Airport contingent upon the receipt of a grant from the Federal Aviation Administration. Move the approval. Second. Okay, move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Uh, just a point of clarification, I believe it is number 10 because we inserted 21 up where uh, item 4 was. My apologies. No, no, no apology needed. No apo this is simply for the records, <laughs> not, not for correction. All right, any discussion among council? Okay, any audience? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Uh, item number 11. Uh, uh, no, item number 12, I'm sorry. The next item up for bid. Uh, is subject airport work order number two, Hatch Mott McDonald, Florida, Limited Liability Corporation Design Services, Rehabilitation of Parking Garage. The recommendation is that City Council approve work order number two with Hatch Mott McDonald LLC covering design services for the rehabilitation of the par public parking garage at Pensacola International Airport. Move the approval. Second. Moved and second. Uh, discussion about council. Audience. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous, no. Mr. Reynolds. I'm sorry, Council, Councilman. I'm sorry. That's okay. I voted no. Okay. If we can get you to raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. At the request of Madam Clerk. Oh, okay. Request. No rule. I'll get okay. used to it. Right, so, so that was. Right. Okay, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, sorry Mr. President. That. The next item is subject: Airport Pensacola Aviation Center LLC consent to sublease. The recommendation is that City Council authorize the Mayor to execute written consent allowing Pensacola Aviation Center LLC to sublease portions of the lease premises that it has as provided under the original terms and conditions of its lease agreement with the City of Pensacola to Blue Horizon Aviation Incorporated. Move the approval. Second. I move to second discussion. Well, I, do. I have, so you have this one company sublease into another company and there's, there's no monetary uh, exchange there's no increase in business there's nothing for the airport to have to do with at all in reference to this sublease and other business uh, mr. vice excuse me ms. vice president uh, mm -hmm. I can have uh, Melinda Crawford the airport director come up and address your concerns okay. thank you under the terms and conditions of the existing lease um, the tenant is still responsible for the rents that they pay. They are eligible to sublease a portion. It is not any additional income to the airport, but it's not a reduction of income to the airport either. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. Okay. Any other question among council? Audience? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Ms. Reynolds? Thank you, Mr. President. Let me make sure I'm not skipping one. I believe it's 14 uh, Airport Blue Horizon uh, Aviation Incorporated okay. Thank you, sir. Permit. Thank you, 
The next item is subject, Airport Arrows LLC consent to sublease. The recommendation is that City Council authorize the Mayor to execute written consent allowing Arrows LLC to sublease portions of the lease premises that it has as provided in the original terms and conditions of its lease agreement with the City of Pensacola to Eric Evans Aviation Limited. Move the approval. Second. Okay, move the second. Any discussion on Council? Audience? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that passed unanimously. Okay, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. The next subject is Airport Blue Horizon Aviation Incorporated Operating Permit. The recommendation is that City Council authorize the Mayor to execute an operating permit with Blue Horizon Aviation Incorporated for commercial aeronautical services at Pensacola International Airport. Move the approval. Second. Okay, moved and second. Discussion? Council? Audience? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. President, the next item is subject Airport Eric Evans Aviation Limited Operating Permit. The recommendation is that City Council authorize the Mayor to execute an operating permit with Eric Evans Aviation Limited for commercial aeronautical services at Pensacola International Airport. Moves approval. Okay, moved. Second. Second. Okay, discussion, Council? Audience? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, pass unanimous. Mr. Reynolds? Mr. President, the next subject is Airport Lifeguard Air Ambulance Incorporated Lease and Operating Permit Amendment Number 3. The recommendation is the City Council authorize the Mayor to execute Amendment Number 3 to Lifeguard Air Ambulance Incorporated Lease and Operating Permit for Commercial Aeronautical Services at Pinnaco Pen Pensacola International Airport. Move the approval. Second. I move to second. Okay. Any discussion? On Council, uh, discussion, audience. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. President, the next subject is Airport Property Acquisition A6036, A6040, A5905, S2592, 2500, 2502-04, and 2506-08, Campus Heights Subdivision. The recommendation is that City Council authorize the purchase of A the purchase of A6036, parcel ID number 14 TAC 1S, TAC 29, TAC 2000, TAC 005, TAC 002, A6040, parcel ID number 14 TAC 1S, TAC 29, TAC 2103, TAC 0 0 0 TAC 0 A5905. Parcel ID number 14, TAC 1S, TAC 29, TAC 2107, TAC 000, TAC 000. S2592, parcel ID number 14, TAC 1S, TAC 29, TAC 2000, TAC 014, TAC 002. D2500, parcel ID number 14, TAC 1S, TAC 29, TAC 2000, TAC 010, TAC 003. D2502-04, parcel ID number 14, TAC 1S, TAC 29, TAC 2000, TAC 011, TAC 003, and D2506-08, parcel ID number 14, TAC 1S, TAC 29, TAC 2000, TAC 0012, TAC 003, for a total authorization of $989,441. Move for approval. Second. Second. Move to second. Okay. Yes, and, uh, for the purposes of the audience, attack is a hyphen. For those that aren't in the Marine Corps, attack is a hyphen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and they come from an Army officer. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, discussion among council. Audience, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item 17, I believe, has been pulled. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, uh, item number 17 has been pulled right. in. The, the original item 17 has been pulled in. Okay. okay, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. The next item is subject award of bid number 13 TAC 001, Pensacola International Airport Covered Walkway. The recommendation is that City Council award a contract to use and company LLC the lowest and most responsible bid in the amount of 911. Nine hundred 
I'm drawing a blank on how to say that. Uh, $959. I've got numbers still in my head from the last one. $911,000 and $59 for the construction of the Pensacola International Airport covered walkway project, plus a 10% contingency. Move the approval. Second. Okay, moved and second. Yes, Councilman. I just have a quick question on uh, disclosure issues since I'm new Sorry. to this council. Uh, in my in my everyday job, I uh, uh, have a current negotiation with the uh, Houston company for a uh, lease. Right. Uh, would that be an issue, or should I recuse myself from something like that? Uh, I'll turn to the attorney. It has nothing to do with this this particular item, but I would right. benefit monetarily with, from Houston company on a different issue completely. Sure. Then, then I think my intuitive reaction would for you just to abstain would be the cleaner way. Well, then I'll, I'll be abstaining from this. Okay. One. Thank you very much, Councilman. Anybody else? Yes, Councilman. Well, you, I was just wondering what happened to no, item number 17. I mean, now we're on. Uh, it's gone. 18. Uh, it was pulled. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll ask under, um, I guess, old business why it was pulled. I mean, we have people wish. here in the audience who are here for that that item. Right. Oh, uh, okay. At that time, we'll, we'll discuss it. Uh, so I'm not saying no. I'm just saying we'll do it at the time you bring yeah, it. I didn't realize that we had sk skipped over it. It went so fast, and now we're on number yeah. 18. Right. It, it was pulled from the agenda prior to the meeting. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll bring it up under um, new business. New business. Certainly. certainly okay. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Yeah, oh, did we? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, discussion, council, audience. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Nay. Okay, and one opposed. And one abstain. One abstain. One abstention, okay. But I, did I hear you say no, Councilwoman Myers? On this yes, point? sir. Okay. So we had one abstention and uh, one no. Mr. President, the next item on the agenda is subject CSX property lease. The recommendation is that City Council authorize their mayor to execute all related documents associated with the land lease from the CSX Railroad for property located along the eastern right-of-way of 12th Avenue between Chase Street and the Bayfront Parkway. Move the approval. Second. Okay, move and second. Any discussion among council? Audience? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, any opposed? passage unanimously. Okay, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. The next item on the agenda is subject, confirmation of mayoral appointment of Public Works and Facilities Director. Recommendation is that City Council confirm the appointment of L. Derek Owens as Public Works and Facilities Director. Mr. Approval. Second. Okay, move and second. Any discussion? Yes, Councilwoman. Yes, I assume that uh, the reason this confirmation is coming before us is because Public Works and facilities as a department. Is that correct? Mr. Messer? Yeah. I uh, mean, Mr. Uh, that's correct. Because yeah, uh, under the charter, we only have the authority to approve department heads. Right. So that's why I'm asking for clarification. Is this a department? And according to Mr. Reynolds, uh, 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 he's, I believe he said yes. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on council? Uh, audience? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. okay, Ms. Reynolds. That is all that we have for mayoral okay. communications in action, Mr. President. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we don't have anything under attorney uh, communications in action. Uh, two discussion items. Uh, one is the financial report, 12 month ending 20, uh, September 30 of 2012. And I believe call on Mr. Barker. Do that. Mr. Barker is available if there are questions on it, Mr. Okay. President.
Thank you, Mr. President and members of City Council. This is the uh, preliminary report for the uh, fourth quarter um, and fiscal year ending September 30th, 2012. Um, again, these statements are unaudited and not the official statements uh, of the city, but rather a review of the progress of the budget to date. And uh, the official financial statements will be done uh, and presented to council during the first calendar quarter of next year as they relate to the um, September 30th uh, final official statements of the city. The first is um, just an overview of what you've seen in the past, which is uh, the downturn in the economy continues, has resulted in decline of revenues in, in uh, 2012. Uh, we had uh, supplemental budget resolutions throughout the year. There was a main resolution in June which reduced uh, various revenues, uh, of course, that Council's aware of. The total expenditures at the end of the year uh, are in line with the budget projections and uh, it, it helped offset the uh, declining revenues that we had through expenditure savings, mainly through personal services. And the FY 2012 budget, of course, was balanced as we ended the year. Uh, revenues exceeded expenditures and encumbrance by 362,000. Uh, revenues were down by a million eight uh, from 2011. The majority of that is is that council uh, approved uh, property tax reduction that the mayor had put in the FY 2012 budget that resulted in a million of that. And then revenues uh, were 3.2 million above the beginning budget and I'll explain that in a minute on the next slides as we go through those. Uh, communication services tax was down by 72,000. Franchise fees and public service taxes were down by 840,000. Half cent sales tax were up slightly by 1.2% or 43,000. Uh, swimming pool fees were down uh, by 25,000. And then the Army Reserve property was sold. We had budgeted uh, that to be sold at 3.3 million and we had appropriated dollars uh, part in FY12 and part in FY13 and uh, adjustments have been made. We received all the money in FY12 for that, uh, so we made the adjustments to the FY12 budget and the FY13 budget uh, was before you on a previous item. On the expenditure side for the general fund, the department expenditures uh, were approved. Um, the appropriations expenditures were 1.4 million lower than uh, originally budgeted as we ended the year and the transfer to the stormwater capital project fund and tax and franchise fee debt service fund had increased. The increase in the, the transfer to the stormwater capital fund related to the Armory Reserve property and that the money that we received for that had to be used for capital purchase. And so that adjustment was made through the stormwater capital project fund. And last year, uh, there was a new uh, pronouncement by GASME that we uh, instituted. Uh, of course, this is the second year, but because of new council, I'm going to go through these categories of fund balance. There were uh, two categories basically before. Now there are five categories of fund balance. In the general fund, there's non-spendable, uh, which is mainly just prepaid insurance, and you'll see the dollars relating to these on future slides. Uh, restricted uh, can only be spent for uh, specific purposes, and those are mainly your encumbrances. Um, and then committed can be spent uh, for any specific purpose, but is uh, related to ordinances or resolutions, so that would be your carryover, a matter of fact, that's on the agenda uh, this time. Uh, assignments are those designated funds uh, for future needs. And unassigned is just your balance that's left of fund balance. The categories um, here compare FY 2012 preliminary numbers, unaudited numbers, to the 2011 numbers. Uh, Non-expendable was just the prepaid expenses of 24,800, which is your prepaid insurance. Uh, your restricted was 428,000, made up of 330,000 of encumbrances and 97,000 of the Sanger capital dollars. 
the committed fund balance is where your council reserve resides, which is $7.6 million. Uh, park purchases uh, carry forward is three. The 38,000 and your um, tree planting trust fund is 676,000. Your assigned fund balances uh, include the designation for the economic incentive fund, uh, which basically that were the lease payments that received uh, for the third floor when the mayor came in. Uh, he had an initiative to, to lease out the third floor, which council approved. Those are the revenues that we've collected uh, since that time. Uh, then the unencumbered uh, carryover to appropriations are those that were on the item on this agenda dealing with the general fund appropriations. Uh, the special assessment fund was $221,000 and the designated for uh, lien amnesty, uh, which was a program a few years ago where funds were set aside of $119,200, which left as an unassigned fund balance approximately where we were last year of $1.1 million uh, for a total of uh, $12.1 million. Then our reserves, uh, the, the reserves, you can see how they've grown over the years. The goal is 15% of general fund revenues. When you compare <coughs> where we ended up in fiscal 12, uh, we were slightly under that goal of, uh, compared to the FY13 budget, it's slightly above the goal because the general fund budget was reduced. The balance is for your uh, tree planting trust fund. Uh, as we ended the year with 676,000 of that, 75,100 is being carried forward. Yes, sir. Let me ask you a quick question about that uh, because I got a call on uh, a property right across from Barnes on 9th Avenue, and it was the uh, new building that went up there, which uh, they built that right up to the, just about to the road. But uh, they removed every tree uh, on that uh, piece of property. When will we, uh, the tree fund, reflect the uh, income from the trees that were removed? C could you help me? How, how does that? They are usually assessed and billed. If it just happened, uh -huh. uh, it was probably this year that we received those dollars. Start, since October, if you're saying that it just happened. Well, the building's up now. Yeah. But, but yeah. The, the trees were removed a few months ago. I, I would have to check and see if it occurred in, in, prior to September. It would have been in last year's revenues. If it occurred this year in, after October, it would have been this year revenue, which will be reported in the third quarter report. I mean, the first quarter report uh, that I'll be doing in January. Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, if I could very respectfully ask that somebody just sh send me the uh, – Information on the uh, the mitigation, the tree, uh, the the uh, uh, the amount that was paid into the tree fund from that particular project. Uh, I'll be able to share it with a supporter. Thank you. Yeah. All right. The park purchases fund. Uh, there's a balance as we ended the year of thirty-eight thousand dollars, and that is also carried forward. <coughs> Tax and franchise fee debt service fund is, is closed at this point. Uh, on 10 one twelve, we made our last payment of approximately $3 million. Local option sales tax fund, uh, just, just to remind council that this tax is on the gallons, not the percentage like the uh, sales tax is. So it's six cents per gallon. Um, we receive about 18.22%, which is through an interlocal agreement with Escambia County, uh, and it expires or will be recalculated in 2017. Uh, won't read through all of those. All this is online uh, for City Council. I do want to mention that they had a, a balance at the end of the year of 181900 uh, which was carried forward on the resolution and then the uh, expiration of the gas tax is August 31st, 2016, which is controlled by a vote of the uh, Escambia County Commission. West Florida Regional Library, uh, we discussed that a few meetings ago. They ended up with a restricted balance of 355,600, which we carried forward and restored uh, uh, the library hours that were reduced uh, for the most part. Uh, the Stormwater Utility Fund uh, had a committed fund balance of 161100 as we ended the year, uh, and we did not carry that forward, but it's available for future year appropriations. 
the golf course um, received a subsidy from the general fund of $110,000. Um, do want to mention that they ended up with a committed fund balance of 4900 but there are a delinquency of about $5,700 from the concessionaire and the uh, neighborhood services uh, director and staff are working on collections for that. Uh, part of the issue there is, is he got behind when we had the rains in June and staff has been working with him since then in order to, to work through this issue. Uh, currently, the, the staff, he's behind about uh, four, pay, four payments behind, and, and they are still working on the collections for that. Roger Scott uh, Tennis Center had a committed uh, fund balance of 22100 of which 19 was appropriated. So um, they, they certainly at golf and the tennis center, uh, revenue and expenses need to be looked at because basically their fund balance is, is gone. So they're on what they bring in, they can spend. Uh, as you recall, the subsidy to the tennis center uh, ended a couple of years ago from the general fund and the golf is reducing by 10000 a year. The inspections fund had a very good year. Um, they had ended up with a restricted fund balance of 178400 which is available for future year uh, appropriations. The Community Maritime Park Management Services Fund is the fund that was set up, and I'll report this at each fourth quarter time uh, interval. Um, basically, you have two agreements one with Public Works, which they responded to, and one with uh, the Parks and Recreation, the Public Works. Um, we actually uh, received uh, four services that the city provided, uh, $82,000 from the Neighborhood Services part. Um, the revenues exceeded expenditures according to the agreement that's returned to the CMPA, and that has been remitted to them of $75,790. And, uh, we, we still have donations coming in uh, for the grand opening, which should also end up um, zeroing out between last year and this year. <coughs> Local option uh, sales tax fund. Uh, for many years, I, I reported to council since we moved the projects up that we would need pool cash uh, in order to cover the projects that were moved up. We actually had to do that this year. Uh, in the tune of $1.5 million for moving those projects forward. Um, and then the lost expires December 31st, 2017. As council is aware, uh, all the funds have pretty well been committed. Uh, as far as capital projects, it's just the build out of the two centers that council's approved. The rest is for uh, capital equipment replacement, uh, basically. Stormwater Capital Project Fund um, ended up with a committed fund balance of uh, $3 million, and that's carried forward for identified um, uh, capital projects. The Enterprise Funds, the Gas Utility Fund, uh, revenues exceeded expenses by $1.5 million. Uh, in total, uh, that includes, if you recall, the PGA adjustment that we have put in in order to build our reserves back. At the end of last year, ESP uh, substantially drew down their reserves, um, and we were down by $4 million. Uh, made up some of that this year, almost $900,000, uh, uh, to still be down from the, the goal of about $8 million um, at three point. One million down. Yes, sir. Mr. Barker, on page six of your report, you refer to it as ESP rather than Pensacola Energy. Could you please correct oh, that, sir? All that. <laughs> I do. It's the last paragraph right before sanitation fund. I do. I do. And it's because the budget started that way, so us accountants are consistent, and we just stay with how the budget yes, sir. started. Hopefully, it'll be corrected in fiscal year thirteen, because I do think in the thirteen budget we use Pensacola Energy. But thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, net current assets increased by a total of 700000 and uh, ended up with $4.9 million of net current assets. Sanitation uh, revenues exceeded expenses by $702,000, uh, 
and uh, their net current assets um, increased by $479,000, ending with $1.5 million, excluding the code enforcement and lot cleaning. Code enforcement and lot cleaning revenues, well, code enforcement revenues um, were increased, uh, but they did not take effect to January. So in total, they were down for the year, but, but they will catch up in 13 and should be positive going forward. Port of Pensacola uh, revenues exceeded expenses by $603,000. Uh, it's a very good year for the port. Uh, their net current assets increased by 611, and they end it with $1.4 million in net current assets. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Barker. Where are we at on the delinquents on the port right now? Uh, because I, I, I keep hearing from constituents and supporters that we we are behind, uh, that the tenants are behind, and that. Uh, where, where do we stand actually? What, what is an accurate statement on that? The, the, there are two that are behind at, at the end of September, and I've looked as, as early as today to see where we were. Uh, all, offshore Inland Marine is caught up. Uh, they have $9,600 uh, is, is what's due as of today. North West Florida Coal Storage is behind, and uh, their current balance is 215900 I know that the, the port is is been very active in the collection of that. Uh, they've sent demand letters to them, um, and they're currently working on that. So it, it's not something that's been missed by the port director, and they're they're moving forward uh, and, and dealing with that particular lease and those payments from the Northwest Florida Coal Storage. So we got two hundred fifteen thousand from the coal storage. We've got ninety six hundred from offshore. What, uh, what is? Can someone help me out? And I, I don't want to get too deep in this, but what is? Uh, what kind of protection does the city of Pensacola, Port of Pensacola, have when people are delinquent in our payments? To what? How, when? When? When does it? When does the trigger happen that we um, tell them that uh, they're no longer tenants that they need to move out? I mean, when, what, what? Give me some help real quick on the how that mechanism yeah, works. Absolutely, uh, uh, Councilman Johnson. Um, you know, as you've seen from this, it's not just the port. We have tenants elsewhere that owe us money. Sure. Uh, in the past, uh, uh, we've allowed uh, tenants to essentially use us as a bank, meaning that we haven't charged interest uh, for delinquency. Uh, we have changed that policy as of about three and a half months ago. Uh, we will now start charging interest. Uh, a lot of times, and if you look at specifically talking about the port, uh, when it comes to the port itself, the lease terms uh, uh, basically drive how far out uh, they can have uh, uh, a, a delinquency, for lack of a better term. In other words, you can have uh, at some point as part of the port agreement 30 days to, uh, to, to remit. And then at that point, it officially pump becomes delinquent. Uh, at this point now, what we're doing is immediately sending a demand letter and also a notification that interest will be charged. Uh, when it comes to the past due amounts, we are currently actively engaging in uh, uh, garnering those particular monies. I will tell you that there, there is significant concern from administration and the mayor in regards to at least one of those companies. But regardless, we have, per the lease, uh, we have a lien upon their equipment, and we have a right to that equipment if they're becomes an issue where uh, 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 there's insolvency or, or breaking of the lease. Uh, we are following the matters very closely, uh, and uh, I'd be happy to sit down with you uh, uh, and, and give you a little more detail in the future if you'd like. Well, I appreciate it. Someone called me today because they had read on one of the, the, the local blogs here um, about this very issue. And, um, it, you know, then, I, then I, my mind started working. I was thinking, well, how did they get that information? This particular operator of this blog, and then I, a light bulb went off, and I realized how they had got the information. Thank you. The uh, airport um, had a, had a good year, um, although revenues were below budget um, by by 4.1 million. When you look at the revenue and expenses, it was positive uh, for the airport, and in total, the net assets at the airport. Uh, stayed about even at $30,000, but uh, at the end of the year, their net current assets uh, were $1.8 million. Um, 
and of course the airline agreements um, in essence guarantees that the port uh, revenues and expenses will equal as we get through uh, the end of the fiscal year. The insurance retention fund and the central services fund provide services uh, to the, the various funds of the city and those are reported and, and uh, come in uh, usually a little bit better than the revenues over the expenses but at least break even. Uh, our investment schedules are available and debt schedules are available in, in the report. Uh, this one I usually also, the, the pension plans, uh, the gains and losses for each of the years are reported. Uh, this year they had a very good gain in, in all of them. The general pension had a 19% gain, a fire 18%, and the police 19%, and you would immediately get excited about those, those are very good gains, but when you look at the previous year's losses and those that have accumulated, um, um, we'll see how it turns out as the actuary completes their report. The actuary will be doing a report for each of the plans uh, this year. And then this is simply a, a summary. Uh, I do want to point out a couple of things that, that you know, from beginning budget, the, the greatest change is in our franchise fees and utility tax, which is one of our weather-related variable revenues, almost down uh, a, a million dollars uh, as you look at that, and those are from our utility providers. Um, and so therefore, in FY13, that figure has been adjusted on this res resolution also. Total, of course, we came out positive uh, as, in the general fund as we closed out 2012. And a lot of that, as you can tell on line item, um, as it deals with the subtotal for the personal services and operating expenses, came from the personal services area of the budget. And with that, if you have any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Okay. Any questions? Uh, this is just an observation, and I don't know if it's the feeling of the, of the rest of the council or not. Uh, I think uh, f for the next report that what might be helpful, what you just presented us, would it be difficult for the staff to put gains in green and mm -hmm. losses in red? And if we get it beforehand, I think rather than try to absorb it all here at the meeting, if we could get it beforehand and then just have an executive summary at least to me that might be helpful. I don't want to speak for anybody else, but, you know, I think that little thing to, w would help me anyway. Right. Announcement. Thank you. And um, this is a time I think we've got to get um, for us on council. The uh, luminaires on this screen are just, <laughs> make, uh, they just make Horrible. it impossible to look at documents that otherwise we don't have as part of our um, electronic doc documents that we can we can read certainly um, I know that it is it's it's important for us to track the trends and and gain the best understanding we can of mr. Barker's quarterly presentations and I just need all the help I can get and mm -hmm. that include if it means we have to install monitors that instead of using this overhead I just don't know how old this piece of equipment is and and lamps may not be the answer um, but it's it's bad I, I just had a hard time seeing the, the bottom half of the screen and um, that's a technical commentary okay uh, <laughs> yes councilwoman well, it, it may be a technical comment, but it's actually s substantive because when you can't see <laughs> the data that you are interested in looking at, and, and the audience, the citizens have a right to, yes. to see it too. So anything we can do to improve that uh, situation, I, I would certainly appreciate Thank it. You. Well, they've got monitors that help. Yeah, right there. yeah if I may, Mr. President. Yes, certainly. Uh, that will be, be replaced in two weeks. Fan One. Fantastic. One. And I think there's so many audience that, that wanted to. I just can't read. Um, yes, um, in, in reading the Community Maritime Park Management Services Fund, there's a reference to the donations that were received. 
and that additional donations are anticipated. But earlier, there was a resolution where you um, transferred monies from the general fund for last year to pay for the grand opening. So what is the actual amount that is outstanding and will that be paid for by those and then reimbursed by donations or is it just once it's transferred over it's a done deal? Um, there is a donation of $50,000 that as soon as we get the invoices uh, to the end of the, the firm we'll receive that and that will uh, balance out the expenditures. Okay, so what was the total amount that the city contributed to the grand opening? Well, the, the city fronted uh, some, uh, some, no, but, but we're going to be totally reimbursed. No, but, but okay, so what is the balance that the city actually will have expended? Like when we get that 50000 will we have put out zero? Right, the, the city put out zero. I mean, we fronted it all, but we'll get 100%. Okay, so that transfer that was in that earlier resolution was just a pass-through for? It, it was probably what you were seeing is that we appropriated the money for the donations that we will receive. We recognize it as revenue, the donations and um, then the expenditures of 50000 Okay, but zero dollars came out of our budget. That's, that's okay. correct. We'll have it all reimbursed. It's my understanding. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Barker, and thank you for the fine job you do. Um, I, I don't envy your position. That's an awful lot of numbers to deal with, and you do an exceptionally fine job for us. Thank you. Uh, next item uh, for discussion here is uh, subject solicitation methods for outside legal services. And I don't know who exactly is going to lead that discussion. I have Mr. Reynolds. Well, Mr. Mr. Uh, President, uh, essentially uh, the request was for uh, staff to prepare a, an information item for council to determine what the options were in regards to outside legal services. Uh, Mr. Mayberger has uh, uh, han handled that uh, extremely well here. Uh, uh, he's available here for questions. I can take questions. Uh, but essentially, what you see is is a step-by-step -step in regards to what the options for you are. Okay. If that's satisfactory, uh, any discussion? Uh, this is just a information, you know, for discussion. It's not an action item. Councilman Myers. Well, I, th I, I think that we, Mr. Ren uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Messer has indicated there are times when he has a conflict of interest. And therefore, the council needs its own attorney or legal advisors. So uh, I think what we need to do, I mean, we need to take so some action, uh, but... Um, and like the memo says, we can do it one of two ways. We can uh, enter into a direct negotiation with a law firm that uh, some of us may be f familiar with. Uh, I don't have any firm in mind. Or we can do a RFQ. <laughs> I wasn't going to suggest you, Mr. Messer. He's over there smiling. But... Um, I, I do think it's something we need to discuss and take action on because that during the times when he does have a conflict of interest, then we, we need an attorney. So I think we need a law firm on, on retainer or, or a lawyer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I agree that this has come up quite a few times and we do need a, a structure for it. I believe at the last conversation, I also, when this came up before, I also asked if there was, if um, the city attorney could put some thought into a way to create sort of the wall between himself and Mrs. Tillery or whomever is in that office, sort of like used to happen with the um, union negotiations where one attorney was sat in the audience and one sat up with us. Um, and because... I think that it goes beyond almost, oh, no, we have a, a issue that the council needs resolved. There are times when individual council members have legal questions, and there needs to be someone who feels that it is their responsibility to advise the council members as to, you know, it might not have been something that has been voted on by the council, but just general advice, you know, how, how do we interpret the charter? How should we interpret the charter? Would this be fit under the charter? And, and I, I've had conversations with Mr. Messer where it's, he, he has had trouble differentiating between his job as the 
the attorney for the mayor and his job as attorney for the, the council. And, and that's a challenge, but it, it goes beyond even an outside person if there's a way to structure it so there's an inside person as well who, who feels compelled to advise the council on, on its role. That would be um, desirable. And I, I, I'm not saying to not also have this as a way, but I, I think that would be good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes, Ms. Reynolds. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, I just, I, I just kind of want to put some bookends on this conversation, uh, if you will, from an administrative point of view and not necessarily the office of the mayor or anything else. Uh, there are times where Mr. Messer has a conflict, uh, and certainly the council should have something in place to deal with those times. But as someone who sees the proclivity of legal expenses ever expanding with this organization, having an open-ended where one person can go in and talk to an attorney. And I'll say that was that was meant in terms of somebody who's inside, who's who's already working for okay. the city. I didn't. I, that's that was my concern. I didn't want this to be someone, an individual. But you know, it, when something has come up and I've had questions, I can turn to Mr. Messer. But there's a question there. And I think as long as the council as a whole would vote on those issues and then authorize then their legal counsel to address them, then from an administrative standpoint, and again, this is just from the guy who watches the numbers, uh, then, then I'm, 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 I'm comfortable with that. But I just wanted to throw that out there. I um, probably shouldn't weigh in on this, and, but just a few thoughts off the top of my head is uh, uh, I, I don't know and I need clarification on how the charter speaks to staff for council. <clears throat> Does it address having an attorney? Uh, beyond the practical uh, aspect of whether council is assigned to council or not, I'm not arguing whether it's good or not. I mean, there's a, no question we need it. What I'm saying is I don't know legally under the charter does it allow for that. Number two, uh, even if we determine we do want an attorney, I don't know if the money's there to pay for an attorney. Uh, we don't have our own pot of money. Uh, you know, we still depend on the mayor's office to sign the checks. We don't have a treasurer. Mr. Barker is our, the treasurer, but he's the mayor's treasurer, you know, finance person, not ours. So uh, I'm not speaking against the issue. I'm just saying there's things that we need to clarify as we go into it. Okay. Any other discussion before, before we move on? Yes. I, just, I, I guess I didn't state it as clearly as sure. I meant to. Was I was hoping that Mr. Messer could weigh in on whether it's feasible to create sure. some sort of firewall and have you know, Mrs. Tillery as our contact right. in this situation. Exactly. And, and I don't know if you want to address this now or look into it, Mr. Messer. He's sitting I'm here. Sure. He, we, we don't have to talk to Mr. Reynolds to talk oh, to the Oh, I mean, to Mr. Attorney. Messer. I'm sorry. I, I, I got <laughs> people confused. I didn't turn my chair far. Uh, Mr. Messer. I, I think that, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I think there are some issues with setting up a firewall with um, an assistant city attorney. Um, I, I'll give it some thought, but that, you know, you, you, you get into situations where, you know, it, it's my duty to supervise the assistant city attorney. Uh, and then if, if that assistant city attorney starts speaking to individual council members, uh, about issues, I, I just don't know if I'm comfortable with that. I mean, my office policy is that only I speak to the council members. Uh, so she's not authorized to talk to a council member about a legal problem. And uh, my other policy is that I represent this entity. In other words, I don't, my office doesn't represent individuals. My office represents the body. So whatever five council members direct me to do, I do. Now, my door is always open. I mean, I've, I've spoken to uh, all the uh, council members at one so, you know, 
at, at one point in time, I, I don't think it's an insurmountable problem to, to talk to me, but I don't, I don't know really that I could set up a firewall with, uh, with the assistant. But I, but I would encourage you, because I think there, there are council members who feel comfortable with our own attorney. Believe me, I, I support that 100%. Uh, but in the meantime, I, I think you're probably stuck with me. Does that help, Council? Uh, Councilman Myers, I'm trying to count. Is this your second time? One time. Okay, no. go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just, I'm just trying to. I'm keeping track, too. That's like, good, good. Help me, because I need all the yeah, help. Yeah, I'm going to keep track. Thanks, thank you. Um, for, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Messer to address the questions you ask. First, you ask, you weren't sure under the charter if Council can contract for its own attorney. I believe, Mr. Messer, if I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you've taken the position that counsel can contract for its own attorney. Uh, I mean, if we can't, then why are we even having this discussion? In fact, Mr. Messer recommended that we seek outside legal counsel when he has a conflict of interest. So obviously, I think under the charter, there's no prohibition against the council contracting uh, for any services we want. But certainly in the situation that Mr. Messer has put before us, that he has a contract, we can't have a legislative body that doesn't have legal counsel. It just won't work. So I guess the, the question I'm asking Mr. Messer is could he clarify uh, for the council that yes or no, we cannot hire outside council. And before I call on Mr. Messer, uh, let me tell you the basis of my comments. And, and, and my comments aren't necessarily one that I think are good or bad. It's just basically what's driving me, you know, my position. Uh, it, it's not a position I like or dislike. I, I'm not speaking I'm that part. But the charter, to me, expressly says that the mayor hires and fires staff, period. And so, to me, that says the mayor then decides on who the folks are going to be. Uh, it doesn't say that the mayor will hire and fire staff except for A, B, and C. Now, if I can get over that, and again, I'm just, you know, just trying to stay within the law, and that's where I'm, you know, trying to to stay within. And with that, I'll, Mr. Mester. It's a, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I think when uh, Councilwoman Myers and I talked about this, uh, seems like ages ago, we, we were talking about a situation where the board uh, where the council used its own funds to essentially hire an independent contractor. I think that you could probably create a situation like that and that person would not be a city employee and not hired by the mayor um, if we had to. Uh, but for the new members, just some quick uh, observations on disqualification. The, the only time I, I have been disqualified in a substantive matter uh, is uh, during the uh, issue of the uh, subpoenas, whether or not this council could, in essence, investigate, investigate the mayor. And without going into details, I think it's pretty clear that I can't set up on the seventh floor two blocks, you know, two offices from the mayor and talk to him about what council's doing to him and then come down here and, you know, attempting to do to him. The, the other problems we have really uh, we're in a very litigious atmosphere here. We, we currently have uh, a lawsuit uh, on appeal to the First District Court of Appeal. Uh, uh, Councilwoman uh, Canada Wynn, on your, the very issue you talked about, uh, w what's the authority of the mayor to uh, uh, regulate uh, communication between uh, council persons uh, and his staff? So. You know, obviously, I can't comment on that, and, and neither can anyone else because it's under litigation. We also have a lawsuit that's, that's been filed by a former uh, council person that, I mean, it's a 57-page complaint that sort of cover, covers everything from A to Z. We have the veto, the mayor's travel, 
uh, conflicts of interest. So it, it, my point when I get back to the firewall is that because of the litigious atmosphere we're in, uh, and I'm not even counting the times I walk over to the state attorney's office on sunshine vi uh, law violations, uh, which have been three in one year. Uh, it's probably virtually impossible to isolate the other attorney in my office from what's going on. I mean, it's public knowledge, it's blog knowledge, it's newspaper knowledge. So it's just a, a difficult situation to be in. Um, and so the, the disqualifications really arise from the facts of what goes on. In other words, I don't invite the disqualification. I have to deal with the facts as they're presented to me. But to get back to your original question, I, I still think it's possible to, to set up a situation, but it would have to involve council funds where the mayor doesn't hire a, uh, the attorney. Does that help? Councilwoman? Uh, yes, sir. Does it help you? <laughs> you were the one that raised the question. Well, I, 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 well and, and, and excuse me one more time, Mr. President. You, you're absolutely right, first of all. What I'm saying is I think that with some creative uh, budgeting uh, and uh, advertising, we could probably carve out a very narrow exception to authorize the... the uh, it, I think it depends in... Mr. Barker's left. I think it depends on who's going to pay this person. I mean, if Mr. Barker's going to sign the check, then obviously, you know, it's going to be the mayor's employee. Yes, uh, Councilman. I guess just from what it sounds like, from what I'm hearing, is that th there's no rule against us contracting with someone on the rare occasion that Mr. Messer feels like he has an obligation that he can't <coughs> be on either side. So uh, for the few times that happens, we can just use and it have to be council funds and say we're going to use these funds to hire an attorney to represent us in this specific occasion, not just in general. And I guess that's kind of what I'm getting, and, and that seems pretty cut and dry. So I yeah. think that's, you know, we definitely need to look into that. And and, and I guess from my point is, is, is it would take a vote of the council to say, okay, let's hire this person to do this and spend our own money to do it. Right. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and not only that, is we have to make sure we have money to be able to, to pay the person. If there's no money there, we can't do it. Exactly. Yeah. So, Councilman. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Kind of, if, if we've identified, say, $30,000 in city council budget that's not spoken for, if uh, there's an issue brought before the city council that a particular council person feels that we need uh, legal representation, um, that doesn't have a conflict that uh, with with an attorney that doesn't have a, a conflict uh, conflict either perceived or real um, It would take five votes uh, um, I believe from this city council to say okay This issue is uh, is something that the majority of this council feels that needs to be pursued There's been funds identified that are available to us And then I guess we run that to ground to make sure of how I don't think mr. Barker signing checks, but maybe he is but uh, but but at that point with the majority vote funds identified and the uh, being able to spend those funds and we could we could pursue whatever legal matter it is um, but I, I, right now I, I can't think of any that, that's come before us here recently but it's starting to get late but um, thank you okay I, I believe um, if the council indulged me I was going to commend y'all for setting a world record for getting out here but we've just <laughs> exceeded that so um, I believe that uh, the clarification we were seeking is are we able to do it and if I understand Mr. Messer correctly he's saying that we can and I believe that that uh, what we we need is I think you put it very well Councilman Johnson uh, we don't want a situation where somebody gets angry and they go out and get a lawyer and then we're end up paying for it it has to be a situation where five of us feel strongly enough about an issue that we can then go ahead and contract to get somebody and then within that we have to look into what the procedure would be for setting aside a certain amount of money for legal fees and I think if we do all that then we'll have everything set up so if the case arise then we're able to then take action does that help yes sir Okay, Thank so you. now to, to, to get this into action, what do we need to do at this stage? I think we already have the uh, attorney's opinion, 
Uh, and Mr. Reynolds, please, please feel the way, uh, way in if you see anything that's going around. Who would we have to uh, talk to about setting aside a, a proportion of our budget for legal fees if the need arises? Uh, Mr. President, it is your budget. Um, part of me has the other issue that, frankly, we've been looking at internally in regards to funding for Mr. Messer when it's a council issue that generates legal fees. Right. And because we're, we're – when Mr. Messer says that we're in a litigious environment, I, that's an understatement. Uh, and it's clear that the members, that the individuals who, who, who wrote the charter and, and probably the public who passed it never foresaw this type of a situation. Um, we'd like to try to find a solution. Uh, I think that certainly with a very limited contract for those rare occasions when Mr. Messer is unable to provide uh, legal opinion to this body, then certainly, you know, that's something that can be set aside within the bounds of the budget. Okay. So if I, if I understand it correctly, then – we have the legal right to obtain a, an attorney if, if the group five or more feels necessary. We have the budget under our control to set aside the funds should it be needed. And I, so I, I, hopefully this will be a big step toward what you're concerned. I'm sorry, Councilman Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just a question. <clears throat> I think I heard in there that you are considering charging the City Council's budget for issues where Mr. Messer is employed due to council action, is that correct? We're, 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 we're trying to look at ways. We, we don't have an unlimited budget when it comes to legal fees. Right. And, and um, when it comes to litigation, litigation is not covered under Mr. Messer's original contract. Litigation is a separate matter. It's, 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 it's up and above uh, the normal uh, uh, contract that we have with the city. Right. So at some point, if we, can, if we continue to move forward with this litigation, we have to find a way to pay for it. Um, and I think it's incumbent upon everyone to understand that, that, that litigation comes with a price. And, and uh, we, we, we currently are, are, are getting ready to defend a federal suit uh, that's been appealed from a summary judgment. Uh, Ms. M uh, Mr. Reynolds, at the uh, risk of being rude, uh, I believe the topic that we're discussing is uh, methods for obtaining outside legal services, and so. Uh, yes, sir. I was just responding to Councilman Bear's question, but we right. can we can talk about that. Uh, right. At another okay. point, Councilman, if you want. All right. And, and, and please be assured, I will be an equal opportunity offender as we go along. Oh no, absolutely, Mr. Messer. I'm all about. Uh, thank you, thank you, Council President, and uh, I want to address my remarks to Councilman sir. Bear. It, just, just real quick, because I don't want to beat a dead horse, uh, but I, I go to extraordinary lengths to try to create isolation on those issues that, that involve conflicts. For example, uh, when a setting or past council member sues the mayor, I contract that out to another attorney because I think it's unrealistic for me, for anyone to expect me to set at this council meeting when we have antagonistic interest in a, in, a, in a lawsuit. And I think part of the issue that uh, Mr. Reynolds is trying to explain is that attorney then bills us at about $305 an hour for those lawsuits. That's not, I'm not billing that, that's the outside attorney, but I can't handle it. And, and so it just sort of snowballs. And that's just one of the consequences of Litigation. Right. Uh, 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 Councilor Myers, that you, no, this you've done is my twice. Third haven't time, you? but you're at, you ask a question. How do we get there? And I, and I no, think. Well, well okay. before you speak, what we need to do is the indulgence of the body to allow you to speak the third time on okay. the issues. Okay. Um, move, to allow, okay. move to allow. Move to allow Councilor Myers okay. to speak. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Second, right here. Okay. Second. All uh, in favor. Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Proceed. I just wanted to, to throw the, this out. Why don't we see how much we have in our uh, budget for professional services? 
since the issue is would we be able to pay for it? Once we determine that, then we can have this discussion again. Yes. But I think that's the first thing we need to know. Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, and we, remember, we have an exec uh, council executive. Yes. So I think she could be tasked with getting that information excellent for us. Excellent. Uh, excellent. You know, so. Uh, at maybe at the next committee of the whole, she, you know, we could have that inf information. How much okay. do we have for professional services, and how much Go is on. allocated already for professional services? Excellent suggestion. Yeah. Uh, let me say, I think we've done something very important tonight. It's something that needed to be done. I, it brought me under completing on record time, but I think it was something we needed to discuss. We have an opinion from the attorney that we're able to get outside. Uh, legal representation should a need rise. Ms. Myers has uh, given us a way how we can look into the money, uh, Councilman Myers, um, and I, I believe that we're in good shape and the situation arises and we now know how to proceed and, and what to do. So I, I commend you for bringing up a very important topic and getting us to get it some, some resolution on it. Any other question, uh, any other discussion on this? It's, it's not an action item, but we've already taken action, so, but, um, so we'll move on unless there's any questions. Okay. Uh, moving on uh, is consent agenda items. Madam Clerk. And, Madam Clerk, uh, I'm going to ask uh, your, your uh, opinion and, and the council. Since uh, Thursday, I won't be sitting there droning on and on and on continuously. Would it be permissible to start at one end of the dais or the other to have a council member present the item in sequential order? Would that be permissible? That way they'll have a little TV time, get to speak, and people get tired of hearing my voice. For the consent agenda, yes. Uh, just read out the items because they have to be read, read out. Or do you do that? Right. I mean, it just starts uh, that whoever's seated at the left just read the item, you know, from one end to the other. Or, the consent okay? agenda. No, the consent agenda is the consent agenda. Unless someone well, is yeah, going but to. What you have to do is read what the items are. Mm -hmm. You have to read every one. So rather than sit there and hear me read every one of these, if we just get a council member just to, to read them out. Mr. President, you can read them out. You're the president. <laughs> talk with the clerk afterwards. Uh, I move talk? approval of the items. For okay. The agenda. Second. So you don't, you don't like the idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now we move on to the information <laughs> item, uh, item 20. Uh, Did we vote? We haven't voted on what on the, on the consent agenda. agenda. We already voted. The, the consent agenda was, items were all items that okay. were passed without I don't, any objection. No, we have to vote to put them on the consent. Is that not what we did? Yeah. Okay. I move. She okay. Seconded. I second it. Move and second. All right. All in favor. Y'all uh, uh, keep your uh, trail. Right. Appreciate your help. All right. Moving on. Item number twenty-four. West Florida Public Library System. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. And this is just simply, uh, in, in, as we were having further discussions with the county, uh, the county uh, had, had uh, put uh, the MSTU on for uh, 10 years. Uh, we certainly did not have a problem with that. Uh, matter of fact, uh, we think it's probably the best idea. It adds a little more consistency as opposed to just five years. And so the information item is explaining that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Council Communications and New Business. Yes, Mr. Uh, I have some information I want to share with council. Um, I need to give out this sheet of paper here. I'll just pass it down there, and then I'll take it over here, pass it out over here. Uh, <coughs> oh, I've got that. Oh. Thank you. 
Okay, I guess everybody has a copy of this. I, I made an open records request on August the 23rd for um, information regarding how much uh, the city has spent on legal fees for the past two years. I ask for um, the... Um, the contracts with um, the lawyers or law firms providing um, legal services to the city. Um, and the only thing that I've gotten thus far is this list of um, law firms are lawyers that we have paid money to for legal fees and it totals 4.2 million dollars now that is a substantial amount of money in two years now the problem is i have i have made three open record requests the same request for contracts for this work so that I would know what we have contracted for these law firms or attorneys to do. To this day, I have not gotten one contract. So I revised the open records request since the term contract seemed to be giving some p people a problem. And I revised it to ask for on... Uh, November the 13th, I asked for, I said, I am revising the request to eliminate the word contract and instead ask for any documents that evidence an agreement to provide legal consulting services or professional services from anyone uh, who is an attorney to the city of Pensacola, its departments, divisions, and other city governmental entities. To this day, I have not gotten one record that evidences the city has any kind of an agreement with these law firms or individuals for legal services. Now, mind you, this has been going on three months ago, August the 23rd, as I, I made this request, and this is all that I have gotten. This is pretty astounding. I know Mr. Messer has a contract. I know uh, Mr. Asmar has a contract. I, I don't know who else has a, a, a contract. But I know that you just don't get up, pick up the telephone and call a lawyer or a law firm and, and say, hey, um, we, need you, you know, we need you to represent us or provide legal services. You don't do that. You have to have a retainer. You have to have some type of an agreement. So then when I, I couldn't get contracts because Mr. Barker said he didn't have contracts and I don't expect him to have contracts, he just has invoices. So then I asked, uh, I told Mr. Barker this information is fine, but I, I do need the contracts or, or the agreements. So Mr. Barker does not have the contracts. He doesn't keep contracts. He just pays the bill when it comes due. So I said, okay, well, let me see the invoices. Well, there are 500 plus invoices for all these services here. So then the city clerk sends me a letter and says, that's going to be $500. Now, mind you, not only, I don't have any contracts to look at, but now I'm going to be charged to look at the invoices. And there are 500 of them. Now, let me tell you something. This is the people's business, $4.2 million. And, we, and I don't know what it's for. I'm asking council as a body to request this information. It's a violation of the law, as you all know, not to answer this open record request. 
It's a criminal violation to withhold information. But I get the feeling the city takes the position, huh, so what? Now, I'm not going to drop this. And I, I have asked uh, the clerk to send me the emails that she sent out to whoever she sent it to, asking them to respond to my open record request. But I, I would like counsel as a body to investigate this, to ask for, for the same information that I'm trying to obtain so that we will know what the taxpayer's money is spent, spent on, $4.2 million. Is that too much to ask? So um, I would like to, for, to put this on the next uh, uh, Committee of the Whole. Um, and uh, so I'm going to make a motion that we uh, add this to the next Committee of the Whole, the issue of uh, the contracts uh, for, for these services here that's represented on this vendor payment history. I'll second that. Second. I have a question here with this. Okay. Um, my question, the first question is, is, what has been the delay? How, have you gotten any feedback as to what the delay is? Second, when there is, uh, they told you it was $500, uh, did they talk about whether or not the $500 was to pay for copier costs, labor costs? and how, Because normally when you do a public records request, uh, first of all, it's, it is in the course of your business as a city council member that it should not be a fee. If it is not in the course of city council business, then normally there is some type of fee, and normally they will give you the fee rate of whatever the fee is and the copies, and like if you have to make 100 copies, it's 15 cents per copy, or whatever the rules are, plus the labor costs or the wage costs that it would take if it take two or three hours on that. So did you get any type of information in reference to that? They're charging me for labor. That's the, my, my understanding. I asked to inspect the invoices. Now, I've had to go that route because I have not gotten any contracts, retainers, or any kind of a, a, an agreement that would evidence what we paid them for. So the only way I can find that out is through actually looking at 500 or so invoices, which quite frankly, I don't want to do. I mean, I don't have the time, but if that's the only way, and I am doing it within the scope of my authority on the city council, uh, because we are often asked to approve uh, legal fees for this and that. So I think that, uh, uh, you know, that if it, that that that's the, the the situation. Unfortunately, I have to make open record requests because of the prohibition on ask, on uh, speaking with uh, staff members. But I just wanted to share this information, and I hope council is concerned enough to want to know what 4.2 million dollars was spent on in the past two years. Mr. President. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, the, the invoices will cover that, uh, Councilwoman Myers. Uh, they'll, they'll specifically outline what the outlays were for. But I have to pay for those. They're charging me for them. The contracts should not be that voluminous. And, and then I'm I have not, to go through 500 invoices. I'm not sure of any contracts that we have. I have not checked into it, frankly. But other than with Mr. Messer, uh, and maybe uh, Mr. Messer can help us out here, but when Mr. Messer calls other attorneys and asks for a legal opinion, uh, since I've been here, I have not signed one contract dealing with legal, legal services. Well, we have to have some time. It has to be a letter. Maybe it's an email, but there has to be some understanding with these. Here's one law firm we paid $1.6 million to. I mean, it goes on and on. We have to have, have some kind of memorialization even if it's Mr. Messer's notes or maybe Mr. Messer's emails. I, I don't know, but there has to be something besides invoices because, I mean, you know, for this $1.6 million, they could have submitted 100 invoices. I just want to know what they did. I, I mean, I don't need to, 
to look at the invoices, that's going to be very time consuming. I just want to know what we've retained them to do. Thank you, Mr. President. I, you know, I seconded this motion, and it's very clear in our charter where it says to inquire into the conduct of any municipal office, department, or agency, or officer, and to investigate municipal affairs, and for that purpose may subpoena witnesses, administer oaths, and compel the production of books, papers, or other evidence. I think if we need something to do our jobs as legislators, we should be able to get it without having to pay a fee. And if it takes authorizing from the city council, if we have to vote on that, to send that to the administrator, to the mayor, then we may have to do that. But uh, I, I hate the idea of, of having to request and pay fees for public records that I should have access to as a council member. That's why I was elected, is to be able to be informed about what's going on in our government. And I think that, you know, if, if we can't get individually, we need to authorize the council and have a vote to do that. Yes, sir. And, and if I may, Mr. President, uh, uh, specifically. Uh, uh, Mr. Messer was next, and then I'll get you right after. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, to, to try to illuminate some of this so we, we have a little balance in the discussion. Um, just off the top of my head, law firms like Allen, Norton, and Blue, uh, Emanuel Shepard, Beggs and Lane, uh, we, we've been, the city has been operating probably under the same fee agreement for, I'm guessing, 25 or 30 years. So whenever those law firms and law firms similar to those law firms are called upon to render an opinion, they just do it at a rate that they haven't raised probably in the last two decades. Uh, I think our personal injury um, law firm, I forget the name of it now, uh, has billed us $125 an hour for the last 25 years. So that that's a large part of that it, it are, are just contracts that go back in, in history. The other thing we need to understand is that enterprise funds contract with attorneys on their own. For example, the airport has many problems, uh, not many problems, the, the airport <laughs> has several <laughs> problems, uh, among which is a min minimum standards issue that they contracted with a law firm in Philadelphia before. That never comes through the city attorney's office and probably not through administration either. But they're self-sustaining and they hire their own attorneys and they pay the bills and you know, we move on down the road. So in terms of what you find on the invoice, the invoice will show what that attorney did, and that can be correlated to a certain event. But I don't think you're going to find a contract for every single event. I think it's, it's they're like umbrella contracts, and we call, for employment, we call Allen Norton and Blue. For construction, we call Beggs and Lane. Uh, for real estate, we probably call Emanuel Shepard. Uh, and uh, they simply bill us based on the client's desire, whether that be uh, a council desire, uh, as exemplified by five votes, or a, or a mayoral interest. So hopefully that does a little bit to help us. I'm sorry, Ms. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just wanted to point out to council, and it's one thing, frankly, that, that I've been struggling with, is that According to the council's own policies, there's no, there's no exception for council members when it comes to uh, charging for public records requests. Now, I would encourage you to incorporate such a, a, uh, a, a, a if, if, if five members of this body determine that's what you want to do, then, then I certainly don't have a problem with that. Or the alternative is, is each time there is a, a, a question that comes up, this body can vote on to waive the fee. Uh, but, you know, it, it's your policies that we're talking about. And, and uh, absent some exception to that, uh, you can see the position it puts us in. Uh, well, if I could ask Ms. Reynolds a question. How many uh, open record requests would you say there have been within the last year, Mr. Reynolds? <laughs> Uh, that's an excellent question, Mr. President. I can tell you that, and I don't want to exaggerate, but I probably spend three hours a week on opens records requests. We get on an average five, six, uh, four of those a week are probably from council. Uh, so it would be it safe is truly to say, unlike anything I've seen in my so, past. So it would be safe to say that you're getting an average of four per week from council members. I would say that that would be a safe number. Okay. 
I believe Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Council President. And I, I want to address that because I, I hear Councilman Woman Myers fighting. She can't get this information. And I pulled up the question I sent to Mr. Reynolds during our budget, and, and I had uh, pages of questions, which the staff freely answered, including attachment G, which was anticipated legal costs, you know, with notations of which attorneys are doing it. It doesn't have the dollars. This was anticipated. It was a budgetary question. And, and I would encourage Councilman Myers and other council members, just ask them, because the open records, I mean, I, I, I hate when we have to come in and go through and it's like some random word. And it, it, it's such a broad brush and it's a lot of work. But, but staff is responsive. They will try and answer your questions. I, I, I do know that when I first, when, before I got on council, I met with uh, Mr. Barker and, and the port was always a question and people are always saying, oh, the port's losing money. And I said, Mr. Barker, is the port losing money? And he's like, no, the port's not losing money. So then I went to actually um, David Bailey. I met with him and I said, okay, David, you know how this works. Is the port losing money? He's like, well, Mr. Barker, I'll answer the question you asked, but you have to make sure you ask the right question. So I've known that for a while. But if you ask the question, you do get an answer. And, and I think that, that this struggle of, of public records requests is, is, is too heavy-handed. And I, I find that I get good answers when I ask the questions. And so I would encourage everyone on council, just ask, and they will be as responsive as possible. You know, you look through this list, and, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing one that, that um, the uh, Harrison, uh, Harrison, Sale, McCloy, and Jackson, just for the record, that was the CRA attorney. And that was the overly disputed, did I have the right to sign a contract or execute a contract sheet of paper? That's what that was. I could pull it up for you from the Fortis system, except this doesn't do that. But I think that, that those questions can be answered, and, and I think that the staff is responsive when I've asked questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. Yes, Councilman. I, I just wonder if, if uh, we have the staff that the uh, city council can assign this project for somebody to go back and research everything and get the information and then give it to us rather than us trying to get pieces. And I, I, you're, you have an excellent question. I think part of the reason, part of it, that we're in the situation we're in is that we went without staff for, was it two years? And so it was difficult because there was no one to turn around and say, could you find out? Because we didn't have Dr. Cox on board until just recently. Uh, but she is now the person that we can turn to and say, would you mind going down and finding out these facts from legal for us and so on. Now, whether, whether she's successful or not is different. But you, you've raised a very, very important issue. We did not have staff. Um, for whatever reasons. Uh, if was we all voted tonight for somebody yeah. to do it, could we yes. get that done? Right. And, and, and one reason that the meetings in the past have, have been long is in, in, in the old form, uh, we had a city manager that would brief us prior to the meeting. So we went in the meeting, we knew what was going on. We're walking into a meeting now, and somebody throws something on a table. And we're sitting there trying to decide very, very serious issues on the spur of the moment, which to me is not the very best way of approaching. I think what we need to do is put the issue out, give it time to then go through a committee, take a look at it, study it, and then vote. But, uh, but that's just my opinion. But you asked a good question. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Y'all keep count now. But <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I hate to, I mean, I, I appreciate uh, Councilman Wingate, but I hate to task um, Dr. Cox, I think she's been extremely busy to go through these 500 pages or so. If we're going to do something like that, I'd at least like to try to take a stab at maybe the top five or something, or maybe if some, uh, you, you know, but to say, hey, all these go research it, get all the contracts. I mean, this this looks like this could be a lot of work. And, um, you know, if we've got one for 1 1.6 million, we've got some for three and a quarter, we've got uh, some others for uh, 243, et cetera, uh, maybe the top five, um, if we could just start there, 
um, and see kind of where we're at. But to just hand this sheet to Dr. Cox and say, hey, you know, get contracts for all, I don't even know how many there are here, 40? I mean, you know, I think that's just a lot of work. And, um, but that that's you know that's my thought i mean I'm, I'm looking at some that we paid for and i'm just wondering if we paid them to do a public records request on me if if, if they if if a certain you know blogger in town wanted my you know uh, text messages if we the city paid them to represent them to ask for my text re i mean anyhow that's that's just my thoughts just to pick six, a few of them and if we're going to go that route and look at contracts maybe just pick the top five thank you Okay, clarification. What's this time period? I was I was out of the room, so this covers two years. Two. Years. two thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. The, the the two issues here is how uh, for me is is one how council members are going to be treated in reference to public records requests, and I think that we need to bring that back up under our policies and procedures and review, so that we all understand that. The next thing is, is I just find it impossible to believe that when you got this list, even at the city, even our administrator, it could not have been categorized into whether or not they were bonding attorneys, whether or not they were contract attorneys. I, I mean, something that made a little bit of sense, not necessarily having to go through 500 invoices to determine this because if the same attorney is sending invoices and the same attorney works for the airport, then we know that it's airport related and we can move on and this is what it, this is what it's for so i just find it hard to believe that there is no classification at all in reference to how what entity whether it's the airport whether it's the port whether we paid something dealing with the cmpa board whether or not we paid something i, I mean there has to be some type of classification here and maybe getting that classification and having that available on the next on um, for her uh, and then because it is important. And if I, if I, may, if I may address that, uh, Mr. Uh, President. Mr. Messer had asked unless he would like to yield the floor. Oh, I'm not going to yield the floor okay. to Mr. Reynolds, uh, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, and, 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 of course, at, at the, uh, the risk of being uh, the pincushion for my profession, the, the other thing I just want to make sure everybody understands for balance purposes and, and, and believe me, I think that every penny of the taxpayer's money needs to be accounted for, and that's why we have invoices. For example, you know, when, when I bill the city, the invoice goes to Mr. Reynolds, and he looks at it, and it goes down to Mr. Barker, and he looks at it, and I think that, you know, we need to have checks and balances like that. But, but something we, we have to try and get over is, look, you, we're not getting in and out of court for uh, less than $100,000 in a serious case. When you're doing construction law, you're looking at $200,000 before I raise an eyebrow. And we get to $300,000, well, you know, maybe somebody has to sit down and talk. But, I mean, we're sitting here, and, and hopefully we're not thinking that you're going to do litigation for twenty or thirty or $40,000. And uh, to sort of illustrate the point, uh, you know, we have the CMPA who's involved in federal court litigation looking at an attorney's fee, fee bill for $450,000. So, you know, the question is, you know, do you want to be litigious or, or do you want to try and resolve these things? But when you're looking at $100,000, $150,000, dollars for litigation, you're not really raising my eyebrow. I mean, that, that, that's a normal fee as far as I'm concerned for what's done. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, I have a pro uh, dilemma. Both of you all put your hands up at the same time. Uh, I'm a council member. So. Yes, okay. <laughs> I want to call the question on the motion. Okay. I'm going to call the question Second. on the motion. Okay. The question what, is what's the motion? Your motion. I can't remember. Who, uh, <laughs> Madam Clerk, did you write down my motion? I can't hear you. Yes. Okay. And Ms. Reynolds, I'm not calling on you because I believe this is a non-debatable uh, mm -hmm. motion here. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, I think. Okay, I'm one calling opposed. the question. Okay, now. Oh, sorry. Any motions I, on I'm the with you on okay. calling the question. All right. <laughs> all right. So the question sorry. is uh, unanimous. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we're move voting on a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, three opposed. 
Okay. Four posts. No, uh, uh, no, I just had a new item <laughs> if, that was, if it was next. All right, go ahead. It passed, is that correct? Five to three? Or, I'm sorry. What was the, it was a, what was the, the vote? The five vote three. was five three. Five three. I believe it was. Uh, <coughs> she wasn't in the room. Five okay. Five Thank three. you. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, Vice President. She can vote first. Okay. I would like for the council to consider having a council policy and procedures review. At some point, we are new, and there are some things in our policies and procedures that could we could address that could make things better for us like the idea of um, and I've done some research here about this this awkwardness of the council not having staff not having now we are the budgetary people we are the legislative body we approve budgets so the budget and the money is just not the mayor's money it is also the, the, the city council's money. So, for example, we don't have a staff. The charter doesn't say, but we have ordinances. We have power to make sure that we have the staff we need to do our job, and we just need to do it through an ordinance. So we, as a council, need to get together to see what we want to do to make sure that we have adequate staff. There are some other things, too, like, for example, that the charter doesn't talk about, like Ms. Cox. Who is her boss? Who does she report to? Does she answer to each nine of us? How should we disseminate information to her? Uh, how does that work? We need to talk about it and how, the, how does that work. The other, the, so as you go through the policies and procedures, I think we could clean up a lot of things if we take a time out to go back and revisit some of those things. We can insert things in there that would help us. Like, I would like, and of course some of you, I would like to get rid of two committee of the whole meetings. This is a, com this is a council meeting. Then we go and have the same council meeting on Thursday. I mean, in the last council, two years ago, they abolished the committee system. But is it something that's viable now after two years? Is it something that would make our job a little bit easier? So I think before we go down this road of, of, of going through business as usual, we take the time out to go and look at our policies and procedures. All of us send that information to our executive so that they, she can put it together and put it in some form of concerns so that we'll be able to actually address it before we spend three or four months or six months down the road and we still come to some of these stumbling blocks that we need to go ahead and deal with it. So some of the impressions of the things that we cannot do is just not true because other cities have done them out of the same pot of money. That's the public dollar, the tax dollars, the franchise fees. And the city council has a staff. You have an office. I, I was talking to someone Saturday, and the first thing they told me, they said, well, Jewel, how do you find a city council member? I said, you don't if you go to city hall. OK, you don't. We need an office of the city council. We need to act as a legislative body as an important part of the process to create the balance with our executive branch and our uh, legislative duties and help define who we are. And I would like to make a motion that we have a review of our policies and procedures within the next 30 days. Second. <clears throat> okay, we well, have a motion, discussion, discussion. Yes, Councilwoman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. I do very much support uh, the, the motion and ditto to uh, what you just said. Um, I do think we need to have a discussion about our policies and procedures. I would like to see us uh, have a discussion about uh, returning to the committee of the whole, I mean, the uh, committee system. Um, and um, so. In the next 30 days may be a little difficult because of the holidays, yeah. 
but I, I could see maybe in the next 45 days or 60 days because uh, we have so many holidays coming up. So uh, I would like to uh, offer a friendly amendment to uh, uh, the motion and that it be 60 days and that uh, Ms. Cox be uh, tasked with uh, organizing and facilitating uh, that, that meeting in the next uh, 60 days. We have a second to the friendly amendment. Accept it? Yes, uh, accept it. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> All right, any more discussion? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, and so I won't uh, add any time to our meeting. I'll just share this for the discussion and you have it in front of you. It's a, it's a description of what a recommendation for the committee system would be, and I just hope we could consider that during this review. Thank you. Okay, okay. any other discussion? Okay. Vote. Thank you, Vice President. Okay. We have a vote. Excellent. We have a vote. Okay, uh, any other discussion? Did you have? No, I was going to right. vote. No, uh, I, I, vote. just make sure when you do the committee, <clears throat> looking at the committees, they, they all, they don't have to be like they were in the past. They don't have to have the same names or anything. So make sure you, you include some of those issues and concerns over the last two years. Okay. Yes. And, and I, before we call for the vote and ask for public uh, input, I want to remind committee, you know, council also, if you think that it's long doing what we're doing now, you can ask the committee system to it. You're talking about adding a meeting to approve what the committee did. Uh, as we're doing it now, we all hear the discussion, and we all say yes or no. So I'm not saying yes or no. All I'm saying is consider the fact that you want to have another meeting on top of the meeting. Uh, with that, is there any input from the yeah. public before we call for yeah, Ms. Dubasan? Yeah, I'll get you. I'm sorry. Would it be all right if she... I, I think this uh, is an Excuse me, Ms. Uh, sure. Dubasan. There were two hands here uh, that I I'll did not see. Okay. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been hearing this about bringing back the committee system, and I did serve uh, um, uh, under this, the old system when we had the committee system, and I'm just not, I have not heard a compelling reason yet to go back to that. I'll be honest with you, I just have not heard a compelling reason to go back with that. Everything that's uh, on our agenda today. Councilman Johnson, yeah. uh, well, okay. I, I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I mean, I don't, but I, I think it would be more appropriate to have that discussion once we have it on the table. Okay, Mr. thank Councilman you. Councilman Bayer. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I was just going to say briefly that I'm not recommending through my structure that we go back to right. exactly the way it used as to be. I told uh, so, Councilman Johnson. But you spoke about this yeah. saying that you, you no, extend no, the length of the meeting. No, what I'm saying is, 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 is please bring this up okay. when we discuss it. And I, I, and I encourage you very strongly to do so. Council, uh, yes, Mr. Dubasan, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. And, and I, as a public uh, who attends your meetings regularly, uh, would encourage you to support this um, motion because there is a lot of information that is not shared with all members equally because of the lack of time. Uh, some people have hours that they spend with staff. Some people have prior knowledge, but they don't bother sharing it in the open forum because you're always pressed for time. And I do believe that what you're talking about doing and, and, and restructuring and reviewing the charter so that you have all of the answers and all the resources you need is the number one thing that you as a um, legislative body need to do because you make the decisions for us. So please make it to where it works for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there any other business before us? There was somebody that had mentioned earlier. Yes, okay. Um, all right. No, no, I was just saying we need to vote. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, no, Councilman, no, no. go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I just saying we need to vote on that. I'm sorry. We need to vote on yes, that. Yes, right, right. Yet. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, any opposed? Okay. Passes unanimously. Okay. Yes, Councilwoman. I just have a brief thing to bring up. Um, as many of you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, I got to go up to the National League of Cities meeting, and um, since this council so generously budgeted money for us to have things like that. I, um, I have prepared a sort of a summary of my notes from the many sessions I went to. They were very informative. And um, I, have, I have lots of brochures they gave me in case anyone wants to see those. But I, um, I was going to forward my notes to um, Dr. Cox um, to send to you guys. I figured it was better to do it electronically because it links to various, you know, 
programs or whatever that were mentioned in the um, sessions, but I hope it is slightly informative to the rest of you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, you very quickly, um, and I'm going to make mine within a minute, so uh, bear with me. You know, earlier we took a vote on uh, an issue that I brought up in this disclosure, and uh, this council voted on um, having it in writing uh, presented to us Thursday, and then just within a five minutes or so, I'm tapped on the back by um, a part-time vendor employee that we had just made, this, this council took action on. And I think it's, I think it's uh, completely disrespectful to this council right here, to the nine that sit around here, for, uh, for us to take an action and for it not to be adhered to by a part-time uh, uh, vendor employee. I find, it, I find it offensive. I think it's disrespectful to every one of us that sit around this table right here and I think it's entirely inappropriate. Now I know that this individual operates by a different set of rules on the seventh floor. I know that all other staff go to staff meetings and vet their issues, et cetera, et cetera. And I know this individual doesn't participate in that. So he does play by a different set of rules. But I find it offensive to sit here and, and be sitting here and get tapped on the back and ask if it would be okay if he just publicly says, you know, whatever he wants to say. Because I, I'm sitting here as a part of this body, and this body voted on something. And I don't have the authority to say, oh, it's okay for everyone else. I, I, just, I just found that offensive. And then I watched this individual come up to you, uh, President Wu, and then I guess ran the same thing by you. And I just think it's very inappropriate. I think it's disrespectful to this council. And I know that the mayor allows him to operate under a different set of rules. I just think it's entirely inappropriate for that to happen. When this, when this council takes action and votes on it and it passes, I just, I just thought that that was entirely inappropriate. I would appreciate a, a, an apology from this individual. I think it's entirely appropriate. And, uh, and, and I, I, just, I just felt that very upsetting. And to be tapped on the shoulder here uh, by that, I just thought was uh, inappropriate. Thank you. Okay. Council Wingate. Uh, on the, the next uh, meeting that we have, Committee of the Whole. Yes, I'd like to try to get the uh, West Florida Library back on the agenda. On the agenda, right, since fine. we've got new funding sources here, okay. and this also supports the uh, CRA yes. and the development of the West Side. I'd like to get it on. I think Madam Clerk is writing you it down. Make a motion. We'll I'll make a motion. He needs to yes. make a motion. Second, Mr. Okay, President. A motion second. Yes, sir. Uh, is the intent to go back and change what council? just voted on or I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the intent of bringing it back uh, would be that would have uh, well I, I would say in the beginning the reason that that it was included in, the, in that project was that it, they didn't have funding for it we need a, a library on the west side and and there's a system here to provide the funds for it and uh, things can come up again mr. president yes I, I think you're I don't know if this, okay, there we go. I think I was holding the button down or something. I think what he's referring to is uh, what Councilman Wingate is, the West Side Library being replaced by the one that's going to be in Legion Field Community Center. And, uh, you know, having visited West Side Library, that is well utilized. I will tell you that right now. Yes, yes, Councilman, I understand that. But this council has just voted on this issue in the last two months. Uh, I would defer to the parliamentarian, but essentially what you're doing then would be bringing back the same issue. Uh, Ms. May I, Mr. President? Yes. Um, I, I remember distinctly that we discussed providing, looking at, the, at how we could come up with funding to provide some resources over there. Maybe not at that specific location, but uh, maybe through, through some of the churches, uh, some way of putting computers over there, since a lot of people use computers. But we, we didn't just close the door on doing something. So uh, I, I, I'm in support of putting it on the agenda because I distinctly remember that we felt like we needed to do something maybe in collaboration with other resources over there in the community, we left, we left uh, open that possibility. So, I, I, you know, I think it's appropriate to, to 
bring that matter back up. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman. Yes, um, I'm not going to support the motion at this time. I, I hope, though, that not mostly because I think we need a longer period of time. I think that there were lots of ideas presented, and, and I hope that the administration is considering, particularly, you know, what are the um, possibilities of, of continued service or other alternatives that we can have over there, and, and it might be several months before they could resolve it. And also to um, Councilman Wingate's comment about the new money, that money, I believe, is primarily for operations. Mm -hmm. The money that, that was the limiting one was, was the construction dollars from local option sales tax, which is not growing at any appreciable rate at this point. So there's not any new money to consider um, except for um, a way of just f a new funding mechanism for the operations. So um, I, I support us discussing it again in in the net within the next six months or so but I don't think that the next um, committee meeting will have enough information to make a new informed decision thank you okay is, is that a amendment to what no, no. Okay. Just talk. no. I would like uh, the there is a district 7 council member and it's me <laughs> and I know that uh, that has been a very uh, important issue to district 7 so there are some statistics. I'm going to have a meeting for District 7 um, in January, and I'm asking this council to give me an opportunity to be able to talk to the residents, to, talk to, ex to see exactly what they really want. If the issue is com computers and tutorial and those types of issues in that district, then we want to make sure that we provide what actually the district needs. And, and what those, and then be able to come up with some resources or identify uh, uh, people in the community, entities in the community that can help us. So I'm asking the city council here to allow me an opportunity to explore uh, some options there and to make sure that we really get what we need for that particular district, and especially uh, some statistics and data. I know a lot of people use the library, but don't necessarily live in the area where the library serves. So some statistical data will help us determine how we proceed and how we can best uh, work with those children. Everyone has talked to me, whoever has talked to me, talked about the two public housing areas there that it serves. So we want to make sure that we're able to target the exact need based on some data from the library of the usage there so that we can address those needs. So I'm just simply asking the council to, to give me about six or seven months to uh, be able to talk it out and work it out and come back. Mr. Wingate, how are you with that? Yeah. Councilman, okay. M Mr. President, so, yes, I'm if sorry. I can. Yes. We, we have just went through an exercise with the county of trying to solve the insolvency of your library system. We don't have enough money to take care of what we have right now. And I know that as elected officials, you want to do everything you can to everybody you can. And I appreciate that. But from a budgetary watching the numbers perspective, we don't even have the solution to our insolvency yet and we're already looking at spending more money at some point we've got to say and it, it, this it goes back to the CRA at some point we got to say we don't have the money to do all of these things and 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 I'm still hoping that we're going to be able to solve at least a portion of this library issue coming up in agreement with the county we still have to work out the long-term solution there in regards to how it's going to be managed. And the thought of putting more added burden and problems on the system, I find troubling. Okay, thanks, the, here again, I think that once we look at the issue in, in the district, I'm not necessarily advocating that there be a library. But if there's an educational need or if there is some other need there that can be provided. Remember, we also have the Fricker Center there in that area. Maybe what 
once we go through a series of discussions with the citizens, they'll be able to specifically say what they need, and we can be able to address that, maybe through our nonprofits, business partnerships, and other sources. It's just we just need to get that opportunity to do uh, to do that. Well, I, I just read in the paper that the library is going to be closed over here on Gregory Street for a period of time, so that they can go spend money on renovations even before we open that. So. It has to be some sources of money. Let me, let me clarify that, I think, for, for Councilman Wingate, because I, too, even though I'm an architect and in the business, that headline caught my attention. And it's, it's not a renovation. They're using that term, I believe, um, broadly. It's, it's not a renovation. I think it's more of the insta final installation of the FF&E uh, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Sort of think of it. Um, fellow council members as you're kind of the surgery is being completed with the the old and the and the new and it's just it's an installation of of user equipment and it certainly gave a um, erroneous impression that our new library was undergoing repair work and uh, renovations and that's not the case so I'm glad you brought that up because I think the public may have been misled as well uh, if I can make just one comment, uh, I think hopefully this will bring it in for landing and then Councilman Barra and Councilman Myers. Uh, uh, if I, I, I have no problem supporting what uh, Councilman Buchanan uh, Wynn and Councilman Wingate has suggested. Uh, by no means am I trying to send a message to the administration that what's proceeding down the track I want stopped. Uh, it's just that there is a segment of the neighborhood in that area that feel like they have been abandoned. And we may not provide them with everything that they would like to have, but we will try to explore opportunities of doing different things if possible. Uh, one suggestion I made in the meeting is that there's numerous churches in the area. If somehow we could get a company to donate 25 to 50 iPads. Mm -hmm. uh, every kid with an iPad when they're going to that church is open to the universe. If we could get Wi-Fi and, and 25, 50 iPads uh, in a different institution. I, I'm not trying to settle it tonight, but those are the type of discussions that I see us having, Mr. Reynolds, not whether do we proceed with what's already contracted and what we've already signed. So in that spirit, uh, I, I have personally no favor supporting this, but that's just my opinion. I believe Councilman Baer and then Councilman Tahar. Do we still have a motion that you didn't withdraw your motion? Uh, well, oh. originally he had okay. made a motion, but I don't okay. think we have one right now. The last thing that I heard, but I don't know if there was a motion, was Councilman uh, Vice President Jewel Wynn uh, pleading with us to allow her to have time to meet with her constituents. And that's, I believe, a six to eight month time period. Of is that an amendment that. to the mo Is that an amendment to the motion? Well, that's Mr. what President? I'm asking her if she wants to uh, make it a moment. Uh, uh, so that we I can get this cleared up. Yes. Why don't I just withdraw my motion okay, and you start over? Withdraw. All right. Okay. And Councilwoman uh, uh, Mike uh, might help us out of this. Um, I want to make clear that we're not asking that that anything that this be part of the library system. Now, if uh, Councilwoman um, Canada Wynn has her opportunity to, to look into this and to investigate it, she says about seven months, six or seven months, we are going to be in our budget process. And one of the things that is going to happen is that we're going to have outside agencies come to us for funding. It could be that there would be an outside agency over there, a church, that could come to us for, for funding something over there, and they would be on an equal footing with some of the other outside funding agencies. <coughs> so being that six or seven months is going to put us in our budgetary process, I think that would uh, be a good opportunity at that time for us to look at providing some funding for for a project of some kind over there, and right. they have a councilwoman who's going to be looking into that. Exactly. For them. And as Mr. Reynolds says, that's 
predicated on the fact there's money there. So, because if the money's not there, then we can't allocate. But what we're saying is we're at least willing to take a look. Would you like to make a motion, Vice President, to, um, along the lines of what you suggested? Yes, I would like to make a motion that we, well, I would just like to table the whole thing. And okay, well, okay no, that's well, fine. I'll, I'll go back to make my motion again. I'd like for us to get the West Side Library back on the, the agenda for, if, if we want to make the, 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 putting it back on three months or five months from now, that's fine to give you time to investigate. But our, that community over there needs some resources over there. We've got Tryon Library, we've got a new one over here. That's a community over there that's not getting the resources they need. They're not getting the support that they need from the city, and it needs to be addressed. Uh, now, I, uh, now I, I, I don't understand here. how you think that it's not going to be addressed. It is going to be addressed. They do have a council member. They have me there. I asked for this council to give me an opportunity to go to them to really define what the problem is besides just ha having a library. There could be other resources out there other than having a library, other targets that we can go out and other monies that we can go out and get. They're going to be represented. We can get that information, and we can bring that information back. I know very well. I live over there, so I know very well what they're not getting. But right now, I've been in the job three weeks, mm -hmm. and I'm going to work hard to make sure that they get that. And so three months will probably be not enough time well, to whatever, get that information they that they need. My problem with is going into this looking for a library. If you go in specifically saying that we want a library, we may eliminate some other opportunities out there that we may need or get from somewhere else. So I would like to ex really truly find out exactly what the need is. They don't need a library. Now I have gone in there and I have seen them check out books, but they don't necessarily need a place to go play a Wii. They don't need, but, and I've seen that, okay? So if we're dealing with what those kids and young people truly need, then we need to find out what it is. And it does not necessarily always have to be in the form that we think it should be. And when we said library, we're going to eliminate some things. Uh, let me, let me, if y'all would allow me, uh, maybe. Something there was else. no second, Mr. President. He did not get a second. Right, no, so. I, 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 we may not need it. I, I, I believe that both of y'all have a similar thing at heart. And that is an improvement in, uh, uh, in doing something. Uh, from what I understand the councilwoman saying, uh, Vice President, is that she would allow, like to have about six to eight months to look at the situation and then bring us back the results of what she finds. Yes. I don't necessarily think we have to vote on that, uh, uh, but I, I appreciate, and if Council Member Wingate, I want you to be pleased with, or, or, all right, with what that, with that, suit you that at the end of time that she finishes her investigation she then brings it back to council okay uh am i without a lack of a second now is that the situation well i believe you withdrew your motion but i might be wrong i, I made another one. oh yeah, okay did any uh, who, uh, who seconded there was not a second for his uh, uh, this that's motion what you yeah. were saying right right, right. Quick, may i weigh sir, in sir. um would May I, um, Mr. President, speak directly to Councilman Wingate? Well, certainly. All right, certainly. thank you. Um, Councilman Wingate, if, um, I'm wondering if that motion included the language of um, allowing yes, it Councilwoman um, it Canada Wynn six months to have community meetings, a period up to six months. Yeah, six to eight, I believe. Six to eight. Okay. Six to eight. Yeah, so about the summertime, by June, we should yeah, have some information. Then, then that, that satisfies um, certainly her. It looks like an earnest endeavor to um, to get information. Yes. And Are you seconding that? I am seconding it because obviously, okay, we I, obviously, I miss <laughs> Councilman the Councilman intricacies. Can we wait everybody gets back to vote. <laughs> I think, no, we're just still discussing. We're still discussing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, this is my first council meeting or committee of the whole meeting, and. The last thing I want to do is tell a council member what they have to do over the next six months. And I, you know, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to go out there and meet with citizens. I have the whole city, so it's not as easy, I think. But uh, that's Councilwoman uh, uh, Vice President Canada Wynn's district. And I think that she has already said that she's willing to do that. I'm just not sure if we need a motion to, to tell her to do that. Okay. Councilman. 
I was just going to say I, I agree with uh, Councilman Baird just because I plan on doing the same thing. I, I don't feel like I need to put a motion forward. I mean, I, I know that, that my district needs a new fire department desperately, and so therefore I'm going to go out and try and find a way to pay for that because I know there's no money for it. So uh, when I get that in front, and when I get that information, I feel like I got a good way of paying for it or a good way of doing something, then, then I'll bring it up and say, okay. hey, here, here, here's my plan, and, and then we can put that on the agenda and try and discuss it then. But, right. you know, uh, just to, to arbitrarily set a date six or eight months from now, just kind of, uh, you know, I, I think Councilwoman uh, Candlewin will, will get her information and bring it to us when she when she gets it. It may be three months from now, who knows, but, but it might be six or eight or ten, who, you know, but that's just me. Uh, Councilwoman, uh, Councilwoman Wingate, after hearing this, would you be comfortable withdrawing your motion knowing that she will look at the issue as you will as well and then we will revisit this within a six to eight month time period without putting it to a vote uh, uh, no I, I want to vote you want to vote yeah. call the question okay call the question okay second so if I understand the motion Wait correct a minute, I, I still got one person miss yeah but we, yeah well, we don't know when they'll be back <laughs> they may not come back. Oh, okay all right the question's been called Okay, uh, now, could you read the motion, Madam Clerk, so <laughs> I, if I understand all I, it? All I asked was for this, the library issue to come back up to the Committee of the Whole at the six-month time period of whatever she needed to study it. Six to eight-month time period after Councilman Jules had a chance to get input. We'll revisit the issue on the of things that might be able to be done in that area. Does that help? Okay. Anybody else need clarification? Any discussion? Or council, audience. You can't yes. discuss uh, council. Call the What's question. the motion? The call call the question. Oh. The question's been called. All right. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? No. <laughs> well, that was a question. Voting on calling the question. That was okay, for calling the question. The okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Call a question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. The question's been called. Okay. <laughs> okay. What What's the motion we're voting on now? The motion is is uh, to allow Councilwoman uh, Vice President Jill Cannon to win, to have six to eight months to interact with her community to see what things may be needed along the areas that the library provided, with input from Councilman uh, Wingate. And at that time, we will revisit and make suggestions based on available funds. If the money's not there, we can't do anything. The question's been called. Right. The, so that's the motion. Okay, so with that, all in favor say aye. <laughs> all opposed. Oh, my goodness. Okay. That's great. Now, one last thing. No, I have one. I, I, and this will be 15 seconds. I did not make a rare world's record in getting us out of here, but I cannot tell you how proud I am of each and every one of you. Uh, tonight, your passion for the city showed through. Uh, we're here for one reason, and that's to make this a better city. And uh, I admire what each and every one of you all have done this evening. Uh, we haven't agreed with each other, but we have treated each other with civility. We have had very thoughtful discussions, and uh, I, I, all I want to say is I couldn't be more proud of it. Councilman Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make a motion. Sir. I'd like to make a motion that we have a 311 update on the next Committee of the Whole agenda. Okay. All, all in discussion. Do I have a second? Yep. A second. I got a second. Okay. Uh, uh, any discussion? I Question just, on audience, all favor? Aye. 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 Passage unanimously. And with that, move to adjourn. <laughs>